along with their rushing stampede and penetrating defense, Arizona began to smell the roses until Cal caught them sleeping. Rest assured, Dick Tully, in his bold game coaching debut, will have his troops ready for the Wolfpack. As the new decade looms in the Wild West, NC State and Arizona will meet for the first time on saddling in the Copper Bowl, ready to ring in the 90s with a bang. in Tucson, Arizona, the NC State Wolfpack versus the Arizona Wildcats in the first annual Copper Bowl. Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year from the great Southwest cowboy country, along with Jesse James. I'm Doc Holliday, disguised as Tim Foley and Bob Neal, and we have two seven and four football teams here, Tim, who midway through the season for both teams, they thought they had a chance to win their conference championship. Arizona lost to Cal. Their conference title hopes went out the window. However, they managed to earn their way to this bowl. NC State was 6-0. They lost to Clemson, and they too, even though slumping at the end, did make it to a bowl, but both thought they could have won conference titles. Two good teams. Two very good football teams, two excellent football coaches. Their seasons got off to different kinds of starts. Arizona 2-2 two and two at the beginning of the year, revamped their offense, came with a new formation, and it really put some juice in their offense. They ended up obviously winning the Pac-10 rushing title, would like to throw the ball a little bit more, but uh, you know, they're going to be an exciting team to watch tonight. And, uh, of course, North Carolina State, they're putting the ball in the air all over the place. I think 73 throws against Duke, and they won their first six games and lost to Clemson, but their, their destiny was still in their own hands, but uh, then dropped three games in a row, and... They're here in the Cotton Bowl and they're uh, in the Copper Bowl, and we're ready to have a fine game tonight. Now, Dick Sheridan has a lot of postseason experience. First in the Southern Conference with one AA Furman, and three out of four years here at NC State, he's taken his team to bowl games. Yeah, six times conference champions at Furman, and uh, you know he's had a lot of postseason experience. There's no question about it. Tommy, this is his first time in a bowl, but that doesn't make any difference. They're here. They're going to have fun. When you line up in that football field, you go after it. Doesn't matter whether it's preseason or postseason. They're going to be ready to play. Well, let's go down to field side now with our colleague, Craig Zager. Well, thank you, Bob. Any advantage Arizona may have is with the crowd, not the field. This is Tifton, Bermuda, a strain of grass germinated in Tifton, Georgia, and planted, among other places, at Carter-Finley Stadium at NC State. As for the possibility of rain today, forget it. Tucson has more sunny days and clear nights than any city in the country. Another thing on this field, when Tucson National put in cart paths, they moved the field here, so it's actually fairways becoming a gridiron. In a moment, we'll be back with the inaugural Copper Bowl from Wildcats Arizona Stadium, where we have the Wildcats of Arizona against the Wolfpack of NC State. The first annual Copper Bowl from Tucson, Arizona, is brought to you by General Motors. GM meets your challenge now with quality, selection, value. By Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft taste, so tap into the cold. And by Arizona State Tourism. Arizona, if you knew it, you'd do it. Wake up, old timer. Uh, what do you want me? What do you wake me up for, Jimmy? Well, rumor has it there's a wolf pack around here and a bunch of wildcats and i'm trying to track them down well i seen a wolf pack and some wildcats oh there but two some with that new copper bowl i hear they've been scurrying around all over the place <laughs> With all these things going on in Tucson, all these places to go and see, you better get back on your horse, Jimmy, if you intend to catch them.
The great Southwest Tucson, Arizona. It's an incredible place to visit, and uh, I know the North Carolina State players, particularly coming here from North Carolina, said it's a, a fascinating part of the country, unlike anything they're used to seeing, of course, in the east of the United States, and that bids well for this as a brand new first annual bowl. It'll be an interesting place for teams to visit. Well, let's talk about the team. You didn't tell me you give that guy golfing lessons down there, Bob. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know what? Swing. He needed to play in the rain. That's when it, <laughs> it rains one day a year here. I played in the rain a little bit. Let's do talk about the you team. Bet. Arizona and North Carolina State are contrasting teams. Arizona, Pac-10 rushing champions, they love to run it with something called the eye bone. NC State airs it out. But first, let's talk about that eye bone. And it's kind of an interesting story. Dick Tomey implemented a new offense midway through the season to try to take some of the pressure off his quarterback, Ronald Veal, and get the ball into that bevy of running backs that he has that can really tear up the turf. And as you can imagine, as Pac-10 rushing champs, they've got the guys that can carry the football. And it's going to be an interesting formation for you to watch and analyze. Shane Montgomery threw for 2,600 yards this year. He had the most successful season of any quarterback in the history of NC State. One game he threw it 73 times. But that's not what they want to do. That's oh, not what not. any football coach wants to do. No. He wants to be able to run the football, and they will try to establish the run early against a very tough Arizona defense. Let's talk about their defense. They are led by some really good players, specifically number 87, Chris Singleton, All-American. Some people think he will be. He's certainly all Pac-10. No question about it. They'll try to get him in the situation where he's pressuring the quarterback they want to get him around the action they'll move him from the wide side to the short side they want him around the football and speaking of the key defensive player for nc state the acc defensive player of the year is ray agnew and he is a handful he is big strong will, will again put a lot of pressure on the quarterback but they'll try to direct the offense away from him they also have a couple of real fine defensive backs with jesse campbell being one of them now, interestingly enough, we talk about the eyebone in Arizona's rushing game. The NC State defense allowed only 136 yards per game, and that says that maybe Arizona, despite a good rushing game, will have to be successful with a pass zone. No question about it. They're going to try to mix it up, Bob. I think that the critical down for them, especially in this game, is going to be first down. They cannot be in second and long, third and long consistently and come out on top of the football game. Well, they certainly have some running backs, a couple of receivers that are not the greatest in the back end, but the running back can catch it as, uh, in, the, in terms of a pass as well as run it out of the backfield. So we're at the Arizona Stadium for the first annual Copper Bowl. The crowd is ready to get going and these football teams are on the field and we'll be back for the kickoff after this. Stadium, Tucson, Arizona. Happy New Year once again from TBS Sports along with Tim Foley. This is Bob Neal in the first annual Copper Bowl and the final college football game of the decade. So this is a big one. <laughs> and we just had the coin toss while we were away. North Carolina State won the coin toss. They will defer their decision until the second half. That means that NC State and Dick Sheridan will be kicking off. Arizona will retire turn the ball and they've got an excellent kickoff returner and we'll talk about him in just a second let's talk about that arizona offense we mentioned the eye bone and ronald veal he is 5 10 190 a junior he throws okay he runs the option very very well he is a very intelligent quarterback the best athlete in the backfield is reggie mcgill mario hampton is a very strong blocking fullback who will trade time with mike stridley those are the receivers 
Ogun Fidelity is the fellow on the right side. Richard Griffith is the tight end. And Kip Lewis, the son of Sherman Lewis, the All-American at Michigan State and now, of course, an assistant coach with the San Francisco 49ers. There is the uh, lineup in the middle of the offensive line. Dave Borland will al alternate at center with Toffelmeyer and Glenn Parker on the left, an All-American, and he is the man that will run behind when they need the short yardage in Arizona. Excellent at picking up the third and even fourth down conversions because of Glenn Parker and the man who plays beside him, John Brandon. Ready for the kickoff now for North Carolina State. Kicking off, Toby Simons, number 12. And Earl Sapp and Michael Bates are back deep for Arizona's Wildcats. Both are freshmen. Both will see extensive action in the backfield tonight for Arizona. This game is underway. The first Copper Bowl. It is Bates. After he fell down, he's running it out of there to the 24-yard line. Comes Michael Bates. He had a 77-yard kickoff return against Arizona State, so he is dangerous any time he touches the ball. Ronald Beal, the junior from Fernandina Beach, Florida, who came all the way out here to Arizona, will lead this offense. You see, he's only thrown for 517 yards this year. That compares with 2,600 yards in the air for Shane Montgomery, NC State's quarterback. So now you get your first look at the eye bowl. You see the eye formation, and then the player lined up to the left of that eye. And we'll explain that to you, and we'll talk about it. It is an option offense. The handoff to the eye back, and he is stopped at the 25-yard line after a gain of about one yard by an excellent North Carolina State defensive team. They are specifically good against the run. Ray Agnew on the right is the man who leads the defensive line. The linebackers in the middle, questionable. That may be the weak link for the NC State defense. On the outside, a very good one in Bobby Houston, a solid player in Mark Thomas. Johnson and Anderson are at the corners, and the safeties tonight, while excellent, are both ailing with maybe a flu bug. Vincent and Jesse Campbell. Campbell, two times in a row, he's only a sophomore, has been all ACC at safety. This is second down nine. Here's that option, the pitch to McGill. And McGill, driven out of bounds, exactly at the 30-yard line by Derek Defton. And a good job of blocking by Michael Bates. And I'll tell you what, Reggie McGill is one of the one of the finest backs in the Pac-10. When they made this change to the eye bone, they wanted to put their best athlete in that, what they call a Z-back position, and he needs to be able to block, he needs to be able to catch the ball, he needs to be able to run with the football on the counter, and McGill can do it all. This will be third down four for Arizona. Their opening drive of the first annual Copper Bowl. McGill with the check at the line. Check that, it's Veal. He hands off to McGill who drives out across the 30, but does not achieve the first down. It was Derek Debnam with two consecutive tackles for NC State. Debnam is 91 on one side, and Agnew is 93 on the other, and those two defensive tackles went to school together in Winston-Salem. And you'll find as this game progresses, there is really no passing down for Arizona. On third and 10 or 12, they may run a draw. They may, uh, they may run the option. So, North Carolina State always has to be prepared for the run. John Knees is punny. He's a senior. He averages 41 and a half yards per punt. It is Barry Anderson, number 20, the deep back, who have to run way up here to catch it. Excellent field position for the Wolfpack. Wolfpack at the 39-yard line of Arizona. A 29-yard punt. We'll be back for the first annual Copper Bowl right after this. It's 58 degrees in Tucson, crystal clear night here in the middle of the desert, a beautiful location in southeastern Arizona. NC State with a the football, their first offensive possession, Shane Montgomery, number six, is the quarterback. And a power eye, and the tight end goes in motion out of that power. Here's the pitch to Barber to run to the outside. Barber driving his way to the 43, so pass-oriented 
NC State opens this ball game with a running play to the left side. Shane Montgomery threw for 2,600 yards, 16 touchdowns, but 15 interceptions. Todd Varn, a former tailback over at fullback, he can catch it very well. The receivers, Quarters and Kavalik, both very talented. He'll go to both of those equally. Kent Jordan, number 61, is the leader on that offensive line. It is second down six for the Wolfpack. The ball spotted at the 43-yard line of NC State. Shane Montgomery didn't wait long. He completes his first pass of the evening, a very short game, and that goes to number 24, Anthony Barber. Zeno Alexander makes the stop for Arizona. Now, this Arizona defensive football team has speed and size, particularly on that front seven. They can really get upfield fast, so it'll be interesting to see what Shane Montgomery and the Wolfpack does to balance up their offense to move the ball against Arizona. Arizona will try to put pressure on the quarterback from the outside. North Carolina State's line is strongest in the interior three. They'll try to put pressure on the tackle. This is third down two. Smith the Barber tries the right side. He gets the first down. 46-yard line of Arizona. Running behind Mitch Pokrant, who's a little bit shaken with the flu. Number 66, the right guard, and Scott Adell, the right tackle. Third and short, they come with a toss. It's just power blocking on the line. And watch Pokran. Big guy gets out in front. Darrell Lewis can't elude him. And if Barber had been able to get his footing, he might have turned that into a much bigger game. Anthony Barber rushed for 412 yards on the regular season. Scored three touchdowns on the first down. And Oscar Barber stumbled at the moment of handoff and drives to about the 45-yard line. Darren Case made the stop. For Arizona, Darren Case, the left inside linebacker, number 50. This defensive team for Arizona, Reggie Johnson and Gaddis on the outside, Hakes, a senior, is the nose guard. The linebackers inside, Donnie Salem, team's leading tackler. He is a scrapper. Alexander and Singleton, excellent. Singleton, all pack 10 on that side. Daryl Lewis is not only a great punt returner, former running back, excellent cornerback. The safeties are Scott Geyer and Chris Wright. Geyer playing at free safety in place of their all pack 10 free safety. Jeff Hammerschmidt, who is injured and was out for the season. On the option, the pitch to Barber. It's open for the first down to the 35-yard line. So Shane Montgomery gives Arizona a little bit of their own message. Let's look at his Wolfpack option as Shane Montgomery comes down the line of scrimmage. We're looking at Chris Singleton. Closes to the inside. Now he's got to play cat and mouse. His man, the responsibility is the quarterback. Turn, pursue laterally, try to get there. Beginning to get more close on that from the outside to narrow that gap, then Singleton can be of assistance in pursuit. In the backfield now, number 43, Tyrone Jackson at tailback for NC State, along with Barn, the fullback, who gets the ball. Barn gets inside the 35 to about the 32-yard line. So this Wolfpack moving the football on Arizona. This is Arizona's home stadium. They lost only one game here this year. Dick Tomey's team lost to Southern Cal late in the season. Dick Tomey, he's an Indiana boy out of Greencastle, Indiana, went to DePaul University where he played football and baseball and then has worked for Donahue, Pepper Rogers, Dick Vermeil. Very successful coach in his own right now. Now Chris Williams in the backfield for NC State. And Shane McDonough gets it off just as he is leveled. It was Chris Wright, the strong safety, with the blitz coming up the right side, number 31. He tried to get the ball to 15, Todd Barn. Larry McDuff, the defensive coordinator here in Arizona, had had enough of this slow march stuff. He brings the strong safety. Chris Wright puts Montgomery on the ground. He's trying to hit Barn on that little short circle over the middle, but Wright didn't give him a chance to get it off. This will be third down seven. Chris Wright, by the way, is a graduate. He already has his degree in Arizona. There's that widespread formation. We see it a lot with NC State. Montgomery goes back there all alone and throws it. It's incomplete, intended for Chris Williams. And that'll bring up fourth down from the 33-yard line, and that is in the field goal range of Damon Harmon, Hartman, who is a sophomore from Roswell, Georgia. And so Dick Sheridan is going to go for the field goal. The longest one kicked this year by Damon Hartman was 52 yards. This will be right at 50, so he has the leg for it. The holder is Bobby Jerkins, number nine. And if there's any assistance from the wind, he's got a little bit of that. That field goal attempt.
attempt is no good with 9.57 remaining in the first quarter. Both Arizona and NC State have failed to draw bloods on their first offensive possession. That's called saguaro cactus. It's everywhere here around southeastern Arizona. And you saw the black holes that look like bullet holes in the cactus. <laughs> that cactus was at the golf course at our hotel. Those are golf ball wounds. Arizona takes over possession of the small first down 10 from their own 33. Scoreless game, 9.57 to go in the first quarter. On the option, penalty markers are down. NC State has the ball on a fumble. Mario Hampton had it, and Debnab is the man with the ball for NC State. It looked like a penalty was thrown, but it was actually the beanbag the official carries to spot where the ball went down. And it's at the 33-yard line and the first big turnover of the game, and turnovers can be a big story here, Tim. Very A characteristic for Arizona. Their running backs have fumbled the ball twice all year. That's an incredible statistic considering how much they do run the football. It was just torn out of there, and it looked like it might have been Agnew and the one that tore it loose, but just a big play by the Wolfpack defense. NC State with the ball at the 33-yard line now of Arizona. Here's a reverse. It is picked to Al Bird, who slips on the turf and goes down at the 37. Bird, the flanker. Zeno Alexander made the stop. And a Bird is playing on a sore ankle. One of the NC State players is down, by the way. The so the first turnover, we were talking about Arizona. Arizona is plus 14 in turnovers this year. NC State is only plus one. So as you analyze the game, we'll check on that player for you. As you analyze the game team, you worry, you, you ask about that being a real problem for NC State. And here's what happens in a bowl game. It just goes the other way. Exactly. Look, let's look at that fumble again. Veal hands it to Hampton. Hampton now heading upfield, trying to find a crack. Working around, and it looked like Ray Agnew put all of his 275 pounds on that football and just wrenched it out from Hampton's grasp. The injured NC State player is left guard Clyde Hawley, sophomore from Roxboro, North Carolina. As you see, he is walking off the field under his own power, and a player who's been injured much of the year Formerly a starter will go in for Hawley. Number 74, Charlie Cobb. Cobb's a, a junior. Robbie Caldwell's the offensive line coach for the Wolfpack, and he's really had his work cut out for him this year because injuries have been a significant problem for them up front. As a matter of fact, Adell tonight is playing with a dislo dislocated shoulder. It's a problem for him. He wears a strap to try to keep it in. This will be second down 13. NC State with the ball inside Arizona territory after the fumble recovery. The pitch to Barber on that wide sweep, and he is knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line by cornerback Darrell Lewis. The first down marker at the 23. Okay, let's look at this from up high. Arizona is looking for a pass. A, this is a team that's thrown the ball a lot, the Wolf Pack, at the end of the season. So what do they do in a passing situation? They run the option. They're trying to get Barber outside. Darrell Lewis making sure first that it's not a halfback pass, then reacting up. Geyer coming from the inside to help in pursuit. North Carolina State with four solid tailbacks in Barber, Jackson, Shaw, and Williams, and we'll probably see them all during the night. Third down five from the 28. Montgomery to go to the air with plenty of time. It looked as though the intended receiver was knocked out of bounds at the 22, Chris Williams. But is there a penalty play? I don't see one, but there certainly should be one if not. He was bumped before the ball got there. And yes, there is a flag. We just don't see it anywhere down there. As Chris Williams came over to take that out, he was knocked out of bounds. And by the way, I see Chris Quarters down around the 10-yard line to the the right side of the officials as we look at them. He is laying on the turf for NC State, the second NC State player to be shaken up early in this football game. You see the call was defensive holding against Arizona. In talking to Dick Sheridan before the game, Bob, one of his concerns was his receivers, Cordes and Reggie Lawrence, both had orthoscopic knee surgery not too long ago, and uh, that, that 
they weren't sure whether we were going to be able to perform tonight or not. And obviously, Cordes having a problem. So Holly was injured. The left guard and Cobb went into play for him for the Wolfpack. And now, Cordes is down. And as you can see, he's having problem with that knee. And it looks to be serious enough to get him out of the ball game for the moment, for sure. Al Bird and Bobby Jurgens back up over at that position. It's Kavalik and Lawrence on the other side. And as Tim told you, Lawrence is playing following arthroscopic surgery also. So two early injuries to NC State. We have 9.09 to go in the first quarter from Arizona Stadium. It is a scoreless football game in the first annual Copper Bowl. And it is Al Bird who goes in to replace Porter. He splits wide to the left side. Over to the right side is freshman Reggie Lawrence. And run it to the left with Barber. Hit behind the line at the 27-yard line. And that's 87, Chris Singleton. The all pac 10 linebacker, penalty marker, is down in the NC State backfield. Well, I'll tell you what. Chris Singleton that time, he, he chewed him up and spit him out. Now, I'm not sure what the call is here, but uh, what a play. They tried to double-team him, and just watch this. This man works. They've got the tight end in the backfield. One of the reasons the tight end's in the backfield is so they can get strength going both ways. Watch 87 work his way through those blockers, fight his way upfield through Todd Harrison, through the pulling guard, and lays them out. It may be that the penalty is against Singleton. That's why he's standing in there talking. By the way, the officials are from the Collegiate Independent Football Officiating Association. This is a mixed conference game. First time these two teams have played each other. First time NC State's ever played a Pac-10 team from Famer. The man in the white hat is the referee. Personal foul. And I think they were calling it against Singleton. It looked like he maybe got his knee up there. That's a big one. They'll move this ball down to the 11-yard line. Well, after the way I've seen some college teams uh, and uh, teams and players celebrate after something good happens, I think that's a little bit uh, of a low blow right there, unless something happened that we didn't see. At the 11-yard line, first down NC State. This home crowd of Arizona didn't like that call. Hand off to Todd Barnes to the 8-yard line. Tackled by Ken Hake. Todd Barnes, former tailback who moved over to fullback. Time left in the first quarter, 8.33. Scoreless game thus far, but the personal foul call against Arizona has moved it down near the 10 and now inside the 10 for the Wolfpack. Big break for North Carolina State. Fine job running by Varn. Didn't look like he had it early on, but he's got that bulldog determination. He was a tailback last year, now playing fullback, and just a real big heart. Hake said to hang on for all that he was worth. Second down seven from the eight-yard line. Barber knocked down hard. The man who made the fumble. Arizona has the ball. The man who made the hit was number four, Darrell Lewis, from the cornerback. He came up and really laid the pop on Barber. The man with the ball is Todd Burden, number 29. Now, this is what you call getting back in the play. Darrell Lewis is out there on the wide receiver, sees the ball tossed, and here he comes. Singleton takes rid of, gets rid of the interference, and, and Lewis just levels him. The ball pops loose, and Burden comes up with it, but just a fine, fine hit by Darrell Lewis. Another amazing statistic, Bob. Only 54% of the time other teams have gotten inside of Arizona's 50 have they scored. First down 10, Arizona. Eight minutes to go for a quarter. McGill up to about the seven-yard line. Number eight, Reggie McGill, the junior. That's the tenth takeaway that the Arizona defense has had inside their own 20. So when it counts, they come up with a big play. It's been flag football early here. I think there's going to be another penalty marker down here. This could be personal foul against NC State. I believe that's what it will be. The ball comes out to the 20 yard line. Well, both these teams, both these coaches, Dick Sheridan and Dick Tomey, have their teams ready to play. As you see Joe Pate signaling in the defense there on the sideline. And both these coaches pride themselves on intelligent play. Reckless, aggressive, yes, but intelligent. Arizona first and ten out of the eye bowl. The eye formation with the power back lined up to the left side. They give it to Pate. Number 20, he is a freshman from Tucson, Tucson, right here, hometown player. 
Parade All-American in high school. It was Arizona Player of the Year. He's a talented young man in Arizona. I might mention that the region you're, you're seeing with Gill and Sapp and Bates in the backfield is the leading rusher, David Eldridge, has been suspended because of NCAA rules eligibility violations. He is not on the team. They are still loaded with talent. Second down, seven. Beal on the option. Late pitch to McGill. Played beautifully by number 42, Jesse Campbell. The all-ACC strong safety. Let's look at Bobby Houston now. He's an outside linebacker, number 34 for North Carolina State. They choose to run the option toward him. Sits down, forces a pitch by Veal. Unloads him. Now here he's getting out into the action. As Jesse Campbell holds on, Houston's there to help out. Very, very quick on the outside. Both Campbell and Houston cover a lot of ground. As a matter of fact, they say he's the fastest man on their football team. This will be third down 10 for Arizona. The the throw. Nope. <laughs> Only kidding. Veal pulls it in and runs it back here to the 25-yard line. He didn't see anything on the third down. Got two or three, not much more. And Arizona will have to get rid of the ball. But they did move it from inside their five after recovering the Wolfpack fumble out here to where their punter, John Knees, who's a very good one. The pros are interested in this young man. He'll give a chance to punt it away to number 20, Barry Anderson. Knees is a senior. Averages 41 and a half yards per punt. Learned to be a one-step punter this year. One step, it almost got blocked. Penalty marker goes down, you see in the middle of your picture. A short punt again for Knees, however. At the 48-yard line of the Wolfpack, Anderson calls and gets the fair catch. But there was a penalty marker on the play. That's the fifth flag that's gone down here with 5.36 to go in the first quarter. Both these coaches have very fine, very effective special teams. They both spend a lot of time on it, put a lot of, a lot of emphasis on that fa uh, phase of the game. So Nees, who's a 41 and a half yard average punter, this penalty's going against NC State, as you see, has a punt for 29 and only 27 here early. Now, it's a face mask call. Did it come before or after? We'll find out in just a moment from our referee, Tom Thamer. That's what Dick Sheridan wants to know. That's, that's one you usually don't see on the punt return team. Face mask. You see the Dick Sheridan looking incredulously out to the field. And it was before the ball changed hands, which means that Arizona will keep the football. So it was a tremendously big violation of penalty against North Carolina State. And Arizona not only gets to maintain possession of the ball, but they get out here with great field position at the 40-yard line. It's a scoreless game, 5.36 to go first quarter. Ronald Beal, the 5'10 quarterback. McGill into the pass pattern. It's overthrown. McGill was open at the 45-yard line. McGill went in motion out of his eye back position. Tim, talk a little bit of Ken about this eye bone. I've mentioned it several times in case we've got some viewers dialing in late. What it means? You Actually, as you look at your screen here, they have got number two sap moved from the wishbone position, which we, he would be a little bit to the left of the fullback, back to the eye position. And what it does actually, as McGill comes in motion here, is it gives the quarterback more options. Instead of having to make a decision on every play, he can actually just turn and toss it as he does here. This is second down 10. Sapp only gets a couple. Down he goes. Sapp is a freshman too, by the way. And I think Joe, P if I was playing Arizona, if I was playing Arizona and I had the kind of talented people that uh, North Carolina State has at corner, they have Barry Anderson, Joe Johnson, they're very effective coverage guys. I would bunch up just like Joe Pate is having his defense do and force Arizona to throw the ball. Their most effective passer, George Malaulu, was injured against California and is not available. No, it's third down and nine, normally a passing situation. Beal is going to take it to the air. And almost throws the interception. Billy Ray Haynes was right there, number 50, and he was so surprised with the ball he didn't get his hands on it. Good pressure by Elijah Austin, the nose guard, coming right up the middle. But uh, you see that Beal is not a confident passer. 
I think he sees himself more as an option quarterback. And some guys just are more comfortable when they're moving. You know, when they, that when they know they have a chance to pull it down and run, they just feel more confident with the ball in their hands. John Neese, a 41 and a half yard average, as you see, and as he told you, he's had a 29 and a 27 so far tonight. And two fair catches by Barry Anderson. He's got a little better one this time. This is a cannon shot. Anderson is going to take it at the seven. And he's hauled out at the ten. Great coverage down there by Gerald Lewis, number four. Lewis is a former running back, the quarterback for Arizona, also their punt returner. And you saw what he can do on special teams. Welcome back to the Copper Bowl. Before the season began, Kevin Singleton, number 84, was diagnosed as having leukemia. He still serves as Arizona's team captain. He'll have a bone marrow transplant early January with your brother as the donor. That's right. I'll we'll have the surgery in like January. I'm looking forward to it. It's kind of like my bowl game. <laughs> you got to get this over with because I really want to get better as fast as possible. As twin brothers and also teammates, you've always been close. So what have the last few months been like? I think we got a lot closer. We've become more than brothers. We work together a lot on everything. We kind of comfort each other, make sure everything's all right. Kevin Singleton, Arizona's team captain, back to Bob Neal. First down, 10, Wolf back. Nothing happening up the middle. Maybe a yard for Anthony Barber. Donnie Salem made the stop for Arizona. So that was a great punt by Knees and excellent coverage. 52 yards, and then it was Daryl Lewis who made the hit down there. There's, there's the brother, Chris. And it really is a, a heart-wrenching story. Kevin Singleton, a leading tackler last year in this Arizona football team, comes down with what they thought was leukemia. They're really not sure what it is now, but Chris, uh, they're going to perform a bone mar marrow transplant plant using some of uh, Chris's tissue. And just a great plant. And a fullback only a couple of yards. That's the 13 to Todd Barnes. And Stop. It'll be third down seven and put Shane Montgomery in a passing situation again with 4.17 to go in the first quarter. Montgomery has attempted only three passes in this quarter. And Dick Comey's Arizona team, well, almost giving up a touchdown thanks to a fumble recovery by Arizona. We're able to get out of that trouble and now have the Wolfpack bottled up inside their 15. This is when a team least likes to throw, of course, because everybody expects them to do it on a third down long. Montgomery with a lot of checking at the line. Put Barber into a blocking situation. Penalty markers are down. The pass goes incomplete. Reggie Lawrence, the intended receiver. The penalty against the Wolfpack. Seemed like people were having trouble hearing the crowd generating some noise made it tough for Shane Montgomery to get the change of play out change of formation out and Shane Montgomery is another good story now there's a young man that just stuck in there hung in there out of Newark Catholic and Newark Ohio a, a quarterback that hadn't played against played in a small school, I think only 119 boys in the school, and just stuck with it, just stuck with it, overcome some adversity, and became their all-time leading passer this year. Third down 12, and a half for the tailback, who was hit at the four-yard line. That was Anthony Barber, who took the ball and lost it five yards. You saw them trying to run the draw to the fullback, but let's watch Darrell Lewis on Cavill. He's actually playing a, what they call a two-deep zone. He's riding him to the outside and then getting depth, and didn't need much depth on that one, though, Daryl. Arizona's going after it. Pogue will have to punt from the back of the end zone. Dick Tony talked about liking to put pressure on the punter. Got it away. Here's Lewis at the 45. Here's one tackle. Now goes down at the 36-yard line. On a 40 yards and 8 yard return by Darrell Lewis with 237 remaining in the first quarter in the scoreless ball game of the first annual Copper Bowl from Tucson, Arizona. Arizona Stadium, first quarter, first annual Copper Bowl. Along with Tim Sony, this is Bob Neal. CBS Sports wishing you a happy new year wherever you may be watching around the country this evening. 
Beautiful here, about 50 degrees, clear night in Tucson. Arizona, another eye-bone formation. McGill went to the left, he came back to the right, got the handoff, and only got about a yard. This NC State team is really bunching it up inside. That was linebacker Eddie Cashin. Tim, you said on our opening and early in the ball game that if, if you were coaching against this team, you would crowd it into the middle and make them have to get it outside in the air pocket. And I'm sure you're going to see Rip Shear, the offensive coordinator here at Arizona, start to mix in play passes on first down or screen passes to try to loosen up that Wolf Pack defense because they're smelling meat in there. They're ready to come. This is a fake and the pass going deep. Down the middle. Touchdown, Arizona. The Olatini Ogan Fidetomy. <laughs> this is a young man who's originally from Nigeria. His mother lives in Washington, D.C. He was a walk-on at the University of Michigan for three years, transferred to Arizona. They call him Ola for short, and you can see why. It's a Ola Tide Ogan Fidetomy with his first touchdown catch of his college career. And Tim has to play fake. They go down the middle to double O for the touchdown, and Arizona's out in front. This is Gary Foxen for the point after. All year long, their home run guy has been Mel Smith. But he's not available to play in the game tonight. And so here comes Ogun Fidetomi, and that's just his last pass. And, and Ronald Deal must have heard us talking up here. You guys think I can't throw? Watch this. Right on the money. Great adjustment on the ball. See it again. Ronald Deal lets it fly. Jesse Campbell on the inside. Barry Anderson running with him on the outside, but that ball is played perfectly. Great concentration on the ball by double O touchdown. Ogun Fidetomi walked on, was three years at Michigan, and was on the team but played very little in three bowl games at Michigan. Has only 4 7 40 speed. Well, can you see Bo trying to remember his name? That's, that's probably why they left. For three years, they didn't know my name. I had to get out of there. He really wanted him to play, but he didn't know how to get him on the field possibly. By the way, congratulations to both Tim Beckler on a great coaching career. He'll be wrapping it up in the Rose Bowl this year. Right, the people at Purdue are happy that you're retiring. <laughs> I'll bet so. Uh, speaking of Purdue, the Fiesta Bowl Basketball Classic has been in Tucson this week. You got to see your Boilermakers win one and lose one. Yeah, Gene and Katie have done a great job with their basketball program. We got off the plane here in Tucson and saw a bunch of Purdue uh, sweatshirts and sweaters, and I wondered what's happening here. Did I sign the wrong plane? It's a lot of alumni out here. A lot of things going on in Tucson. Great place for a bowl. I think these players have really enjoyed themselves out here. And speaking of bowl, you don't want to miss halftime tonight. Craig Sager will take a look at the college bowls that have taken place, plus the big bowl tomorrow. We'll take a look back at the wild decade. The 80s, some incredible plays. I love that play with the uh, Neither one of these teams could get anything going. Running or passing, penalty flags were everywhere, and then all of a sudden, in a situation where we were just talking about Arizona having to go to the air, Ron Zeal takes it right down the middle, and now Arizona with the lead. The penalty is going to be against Arizona. As a matter of fact, they're going to bring it back. It was offside against Arizona on the kickoff, and they will lose kicking. They put it at the 35, but they got to move it back to the 30. They're going to penalize it. Now the official goes. And Dick Tony's offense group put it in the air in an untraditional sense. They like to throw it underneath. They like to get the backs crossing. A little play action as they've done early. Throw it out to McGill in the flat. But with just under two minutes left to go in the half, they air it out to Ogun Fidetomi and come up with a touchdown. Dick Sheridan has had a lot of experience in postseason play, and his NC State Wolfpack has been to a three bowls in the last four years, so trailing seven to nothing is certainly not something that will cause them to lose their poise. It's Barber and Williams back to take the kickoff now and move it back to the 30-yard line. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. All the way down to the three, it is Barber. He popped it out to the 
the 33 yard line. As John Lee is kicking off, 29 yards returned by Barber. Lee punched the kick off and had a strong leg. Remember here, Bob, they've got a defense that's hurting. Jesse Campbell not feeling well, Benson not feeling well, some injuries. They would like to control the ball as much as they can. Montgomery to the air. He's going to take it down the middle. He's looking long. Almost intercepted at the 33 yard line intended for Reggie Lawrence. It'll fall incomplete, and Montgomery now one out of four. Their big strike man is Reggie Lawrence. A lot of speed. Uh, came up with a big catch against Duke. Actually, a 65-yard touchdown over the top. But that time, Montgomery had Al Bird open, coming across the middle, about 15 yards deep. Uh, Arizona laid back well, playing for that uh, deep throw by Shane. Second down, Shane, from the 33-yard line. Seven up in Arizona, minute 44 to go, first quarter. Take to the fullback. And on the option, Montgomery wanted to get it to the tailback Jackson, but the penetration, particularly from 47 Johnson, was just too far up here. Reggie Johnson closed in a hurry, and he's the guy that stepped in there when Anthony Smith was injured and has done a very incredible job in replacing Smith. So the third down, Sam, you see another 17 to go in the first quarter. It just messed up Shane Greed on the option before he knew what to do. He had someone all over. Eagle set back his barn. Everybody else spread out on the wing. The Montgomery pass. It is incomplete. Intended for Chris Williams, number 30. Excellent coverage thus far in this ballgame by Arizona. And that time, Don Staley, the linebacker, just sat down on Chris Williams, jammed him, and gave Williams nowhere to go. We're going to have to try to kick it down a step. Fitzgerald does an incredible job of adjusting to teams at halftime. And Larry, Mc, Larry McDuff's defense here at Arizona is really sitting down on those short runs. Alan Lewis is back in his foot. He's supposed to punt. He's forcing the pass in and punt return. They're coming after him again. But Pogue gets it away. What pressure. Lewis Fair catches it at the 28-yard line. 39-yard punt, an effective one by Preston Pogue, who's now the punter and also the backup quarterback for Anthony State. Inside a minute to go in the first quarter, Arizona with a 7-0 lead. You know, it's, it's, Montgomery has only passed for four yards. And look at this. On the season, in one game, Montgomery 535 yards. In one game on the season, only 517 for Veal yet tonight. A 37-yard touchdown pass came off the fingers of Ronald Veal. but they lost, and that's the important thing to remember there. I mean, they would much rather have, a, I think, a, a, even a distribution of run pass to be successful. The fake to the right, the sprint out to the left, and NC State didn't buy it for a second. Derek Debnam was there from Winston-Salem along with 50. Billy Ray Haynes, Debnam 91. Haynes and Debnam have played big here in the first quarter defensively for the Wolfpack, and that's the end of the first quarter. With the score, Arizona 7, NC State nothing. Portions of the first annual Copper Bowl are brought to you by General Motors. GM meets your challenge now with quality, selection, value. And by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filter for real draft taste. So tap into the cold. Welcome back to Arizona Stadium in Tucson, Arizona, and the first annual Copper Bowl. They were very worried about the attendance in this game tonight because it's the first game. However, the walk-up attendance here today has been terrific, and we have a nice-sized crowd on hand here in Tucson. Beautiful weather, of course, for it. Arizona 
tries to run the ball to the left side with Mario Hampton. Nothing happening there, and Elijah Austin made the stop. Hampton, the fullback, fumbled earlier in this game for Arizona. And I might mention that he's playing with a broken left hand. He broke it about three games ago. So even though he can play, his ball handling ability is diminished. And we thought, frankly, we'd see a lot more of Mike Stragler, the fullback tonight. Well, punt it away, and Barry Anderson goes back to take his fifth punt of the night for NC State. A 45-yard punt and a five-yard return. They've been holding their breath on those punts. I mean, each one of them has not gotten off with a lot of distance. I mean, both these teams are really putting pressure on the punter and have come within a half step of blocking every ball that's been punted tonight. Happy New Year from the crowd at Arizona Stadium. And also, happy birthday to my wife, Connie. She and the kids are here with us in Tucson, and uh, it's Connie's 29th birthday again. Oh, I'm Every year at this time. <laughs> They're my trouble. <laughs> First down, 10. Here's the pitch through the tailback. Barber runs left side, gets it out to the 48-yard line. Barber's been a workhorse. That's his ninth carry of the night tonight for the Wolfpack. And the Wolfpack, no question about it, trying to run the ball more than throw it in this football game. And Todd, Todd Harrison does a nice job of blocking here as he comes in motion on Zeno Alexander. He gets him turned out, and Barber, with his quickness, reads it and comes inside. But there's that lateral pursuit, that quickness. And Dyer comes up quickly from his weak safety position to make the stop. Now to the 29 freshman Greg Maynard in a pullback. Hand off to Barber, runs it to the right side. Barber got near the 50 yard line, right about the 49. Reggie Gaddis. Senior from Pomona, California, makes the stop for the Wildcats. Yeah, Larry McDuff spent a lot of time drilling his defense on nickel situations, bringing in extra defensive backs, but they haven't had to use those, situ uh, those people very often because North Carolina State is keeping the ball on the ground. Wholesale personnel changes on offense for this series, for this set, this play, for NC State. Cavalier, Harrison, and Albert are the receivers. Barn and Chris Williams in the backfield. This is third down four. Montgomery. Looking for Cavalier, his favorite target is incomplete at the 31. Outstanding coverage by Darrell Lewis. He batted it away, number four. We told you he was second team all pack 10. Former running back does it all for everybody. But Jane Montgomery looking toward his roommate, Mike Cavalier, and he found him 46 times this year. And Cavalier runs a great route, the ball a little bit underthrown, but Lewis in excellent position. Dyer there helping on top, but Darrell Lewis breaking to the outside. Good route by Cavalier, good coverage by Lewis. And another punt in this ball game. The defensive teams have been the story thus far. It's a 37-yard touchdown strike from Beal to Hogan Fitzgibbon to get Arizona on the board. Here's Pogue's putt, line drive, Lewis with a fair catch at the 12. So now the Wolf Pack has bottled up to Arizona inside their 15. A 39-yard punt. Well, the Wolf Pack hasn't been successful throwing the ball. Only one of six for four yards so far. Before the game, we asked Shane Montgomery how many times he needs to pass the ball to be successful. Well, I think for us, you know, to be successful offensively we're gonna have to have a good mix of run and pass and you know anywhere around anywhere between probably 25 and 35 passes you know usually get about 30 65 70 offensive plays so anytime you have a you know about an even number running pass and you miss successful running the ball that's gonna be the key for us so so far 15 times nc state has run the ball only seven times have they put it in the air for only four yards and they're trailing 7-0. Arizona runs it out here to the 16-yard line. Reggie McGill with the carry. Good night with the stop. Reggie McGill, a junior from Phoenix, Arizona. Playing here in his hometown. Although, uh, even though you think, well, Arizona, this is their home stadium, these guys don't really get a bowl game. Pete Coney and his staff moved the team out to one of the beautiful resorts on the foothills of the mountains surrounding Tucson. He said that these young men had never been in a resort like that. As a matter of fact, neither had I. <laughs> Look at this defensive play by NC State. Hampton nailed deep in the backfield. The man leading the way, 53 Mark Thomas. 
their counter punching is just not working at all. It's not, it's not developing at all. They're trying to run the draw back in against the flow, and uh, NC State is reading that well and really sitting down on it. Just fine, fine coach football team. If you look at Mark Thomas, who last year played the drop linebacker, alternated with Bobby Houston. This year they moved him over to more of the rush end. This is the leading rushing team in the Pac-10, the Arizona Wildcats. Thus far in this game, they've rushed for a net five yards with 11.30 to go in the second quarter. Field to go to the air. Almost picked off right out of midair by Rio Agnew. The pressure came right up the middle from Mark Thomas. Agnew laid back a little bit, and Veal almost threw it into the waiting arms of Agnew. Excellent defensive play by the Wolfpack. When you're throwing a screen pass, you'd like to get it up in the air. The situation here, though, is when you're on your own 10-yard line, don't get too high up in the air. And look at Agnew. It's not that he just leaped vertically to knock that down. That guy was in a horizontal jump. And uh, that just displays the quickness of a man that's that size. It's amazing. And that's why he was this ACC rookie of the year as a freshman and defensive player of the year this year. And it's not the 49 gets not much further. Maybe to the 47 haul down by Daryl Lewis. I, you know, it's a sports cliche to say he can do it all. Lewis is a former running back. He's a cornerback. He's a punt returner. He's made a couple of big hits on punt coverage. Look at this man. And he just doesn't get off the field. We've seen him knock a ball loose uh, and it caused a critical turnover. And here he comes, settles down on Anderson, gets his feet under him, settles down and makes the play. Doesn't try to come down and kill him, but just let's get him on the ground, boys, and go to work. Darrell Lewis, Jr. from West Virginia, Delphine. First down, 10. Montgomery with only one completion so far. Make it to the bird. Bird drives to the 23-yard line. That's Al Bird, the junior from Smithfield, North Carolina, with the reception. A game of 25 yards. Chris Wright and Dyer combined on the stop. Well, we talked earlier about the fact that Jane Montgomery had that receiver coming open across the middle. And obviously, Ted Payne, the offensive coordinator here at North Carolina State, can do the same thing. This time, Jane lets it go as Dino Alexander gets in his face. And Al Bird makes the catch. Nobody's close. Linebackers for Arizona has been sucked up uh, momentarily by that play fake, and that opened it up down the middle. We'll be back to Arizona Stadium right after this. Back into action on the first down. This time, the man back there again with Darrell Lewis grabbing Anthony Barber. Lewis has been everywhere tonight, number four for Arizona. You know, it's uh, not often to see the quarterback becoming that ubiquitous. And, uh, you know, you usually feel like that. Tim Anderson, our spotter, like that. Yeah, but uh, you, can you can start looking for them to go the other way. They've had about enough of Tara Lewis, I think. They're going to they're see if there's anybody home on the other side here. What if Ogun Fidetomy was ubiquitous? Thank goodness he's only like 16 seconds. <laughs> Here's a bit to Barber. Back to Cavalich on the flea flicker. The pass. It is picked off by Arizona. Number 22, Scott Geyer. Goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Well, it's always good to have those plays ready, Bob. And never quite sure when they're going to work, but as we've said several times tonight, these are two well-drilled defenses. And you'll see here Cavalier coming out of reverse. They're trying to get it downfield, and this is his chance. But hey, Mike, they're not open. Don't throw the ball, tuck it, and run it. Daryl Lewis is back there all over the receiver, and Geyer cuts in front to make the interception. His second of the year. attractions the fans here got to visit from the east we saw the stagecoach there in old tucson tim and i rode in a stagecoach along with craig sager and don mcguire in the first annual copper bowl parade veal throwing on the run it's picked off by nc state at the 29 yard line and it was jesse campbell with his third pick of the year 
giveaway, takeaway. Two turnovers by NC State, and now two for Arizona. Highly unusual for the uh, for the Arizona Wildcats to turn it over. They have made a living on not making mistakes. Neal fires it downfield, and just an excellent play by one of the premier defensive backs in the country, Jesse Campbell. He was having trouble this morning. They weren't sure whether he was going to play or not. Actually uh, went to the hospital to check into uh, what, what his stomach problem might be. But he's out there playing well. And giving a valiant effort, making a great play there. First and 10 for the 29 for the Wolfpack. Trailing 7 to nothing. Barn drives it to the 25 yard line. Tim, you said something that only a player would know, like yourself. You said sometimes when you're sick or slightly hurt or ill, you can come in and for some reason or other it can inspire you to an even better game and sometimes it can distract you and you can't play. And as we look at this again, that's exactly the case. I mean, you have a tendency to concentrate more. But look at Campbell. For a guy that's not, not feeling very good, gets in the, in the air well. Fell on the, his stomach, too. Fell on his <laughs> stomach. That might be a question as to whether he caught the ball, but, uh, I mean, looked good to me. And the boys in white have hit the ball there. To the number 18 yard line, close to the first down. Lewis makes the stop, number four, gain of six yards. It'll depend on the mark. I think they're going to mark it short of the first down. Arizona leads in this game 7 to nothing, with 9.09 to go in the first half of play on a 37-yard TD pass from Deal to Ogun Sabidovich. Now NC State, they've been down here before. They were to the 25 when on the reverse option pass, the interception uh, was thrown. Scott Geyer picked it off, and now as they measure for the first down, the Wolfpack threatens again. And they're just inches short. You know, you might wonder why a reverse pass. Often when you've got a defense that's as aggressive as Arizona is, if you can get them in a man-to-man -man situation, uh, you may, that cornerback may lose concentration as the play appears to go away. And there by the receiver coming open, and you get an easy quick touchdown. But uh, it wasn't to be that way tonight as Darrell Lewis stayed with the Wolfpack receiver as he tried to get himself open on that reverse. This will be third down and inches right near the 19-yard line of Arizona's Wildcats. NC State was close enough to attempt a 50-yard field goal by Damon Hartman earlier, but he missed it. See if they can convert. Montgomery keeps it, sneaks behind the center for the first down, but a penalty marker is also on the field. Looks like the movement. Montgomery got the first down, but a flag went down. Here is the referee, Tom Thamer. Procedure call against NC State. It was over on the left side. Looked like somebody was moving. Dick Sheard wants to know who it was. He didn't see it. Maybe we'll get a chance to see it in this replay. Back to the 24-yard line, where it will be third down and five yards and about two inches. And talking to Dick Sheard uh, during the week here and before the game, I mean, uh, this might as well be for the national championship as far as he's concerned. I mean, he's serious about it. He's got his team prepared to play. They had fun out here. They had a good time. But you know, when they reported to the stadium here, they, they, they certainly informed them they better be ready to strap on their headgear. 40 yards in penalty for the Wolf Pack in the first half. Now on the third and five, pressure from Arizona. Montgomery completes it for the first down. It was Richard Holt making the stop. Al Bird, the reception. Speaking of these Arizona defenders, we talked to Darrell Lewis, who's just been playing a whale of a game tonight, about what he looks for defensively. Really just the eyes, you know. They come and do a, like halfback pass or option pass, so they try to bite you up on the run and then take you deep. So, you know, just the eyes and getting it back to the receiver. Well, that time, Shane Montgomery feathered it in just enough for the first down to Al Bird, and it is a first down at the 18-yard line of Arizona. Wildcats leading the Wolf back by seven. Barber on the right side. Nice to the 17-yard line. Tripped up by 50, Darren Kate. And that time, he almost squeezed it through. And watching Kate getting ready for this football game, he saw a couple of excellent runs by this young man, and he's got the ability to get through a hole that's not very big. 
Watch him trying to find it here as he follows Greg Maynard to the right. Almost gets it through there. Geyer's there to help. Jared Tate is the one that really makes the stop on Anthony Barber. The jitterbug from Garner, North Carolina. The biggest tailback, the tallest tailback for NC State is 5'11". Most of these guys are between 5'7 and 5'10". Montgomery looked to the left corner to Kavalik, but Kavalik, his favorite target during the year, had cut it to the post and was running down to the middle of the field, and the ball just fell harmlessly, fortunately for NC State, into the end zone. A mix-up in communication between Havlick and Shane Montgomery. Montgomery expecting him to make that hard move inside, then throw it back out to the corner of the end zone. Havlick saw it open inside, and he read it inside. It's just an option route, just an option route. Shane Montgomery taking the heat. Third down nine. This Arizona team has been tough down here, close to the goal line. And they're tough again, talking to his coach, Dwayne Aquina. I had given Buddy Green uh, credit for being a coach at Arizona. Of course, Buddy is with North Carolina State, a former Auburn assistant for Pat Dye. Maybe it's a job change. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know something? No, I don't. But Dwayne, Dwayne Aquina has been with uh, Dick Comey for six years, three at Hawaii, now three at Arizona. And he and Larry McDuff have to be real happy with the way his defense is playing. 14 to nothing, Arizona. 37-yard TD pass. And a 85-yard interception return from Scott Geyer. Jeff Hammersmith was injured versus Pacific and had a reconstructive surgery on his left knee. Jeff Hammersmith, in playing eight games, was good enough to be all-conference first team at safety. But you see that Geyer stepped in and really did a great job. Joe Johnson touches it down to the end zone, NC State will bring it out to the 20. And one of the things that Dick Comey said, this team has been beset by injuries all year. They've had quarterback injuries, offensive line injuries, suspensions, various things, losing key players. He said it's been a real test of who is going to be best at saying who's next. In other words, stepping up and doing the job Scott Geyer symbolizes. That. Exactly. And they've had, a, as you mentioned, Bob, all throughout the year and a variety of, of positions. That's one thing that you really can't count on. You can't evaluate. You know, you think you have depth, but until that young man is in the situation where he's actually taking a snap, taking the pitch, catching the ball, making a tackle, you really don't know how he's going to perform under the gun. So now, Jay Montgomery, who's 3 of 11, 35 yards, and the interception, goes to the air again. The screen in the backfield is going to lose about 7 or 8 yards to Varn Singleton. 
makes the stop. He was back right in the face of Barnes when he caught this ball, number 15 is Barnes. And you want to get Shane back in the saddle. That's what a they're trying to do here. They're trying to get his confidence back a little bit, so they give him a screen pass to throw, but it was certainly well read by Chris Singleton. It didn't fool him. He snuck right out there and got in the middle of it. Well, look out now. This is second down 17. This Arizona defensive football team is a good one. They can certainly make the big plays, have all year. And NC State has a second down 17 at their own 13. Ran in by 14. Here's the pitch. And Jackson falls down at the 10. A loss of about four that time. Six and a half minutes till halftime. And I know that Dick Sheridan down on the sideline is saying to himself, as hard as we worked and as well prepared as we were, what has gone wrong? We've turned the ball over. We have made the critical mistake at the critical time. And the trail was 14. This way, they had a problem making a big play at the proper time. Against Virginia, they were inside the 10-yard line four times and never really scored a touchdown. So... They've had a trouble, trouble throughout the season coming up with a big play. Third down 20, looking for Cavill. Overthrown out near the first down six. It'll be a punting situation on fourth down 20 for Preston Cole. And the Wildcats, barring something unusual, <laughs> don't discount that on this ball game tonight. They'll have good field position again. And Darrell Lewis, their Mr. Everything, is back to take the punt. He's fourth in the Pac-10 and punt returns. Fifth in interception. I'm sure one of the things they're going to tell Shane Montgomery at halftime is that you want to read the coverage and throw it to the open man, but start away from Darrell Lewis and hope that it's open there first because uh, well, they've been working over there and there just hasn't been anybody open. Lewis, that's a good attempt. And to the 49-yard line, a 44-yard punt, three-yard return. Let's go to Craig Sager with the well, thank you, Bob. With me is Cynthia Potter, four-time Olympian diving coach here. Obviously, a big football fan as well. Yeah, I love football. Unfortunately, I don't get to go to a lot of the games because I coach diving and I have to go on the road all the time for that. You also have those for the Goodwill Games and U.S. Olympic Gold. I noticed that some of your divers are big football fans and basketball fans and all ties in. You bet. All my divers are here tonight watching the games. And you know, it's a great recruiting tool. They get to come and watch a terrific basketball team and our football team. Of course, we do pretty well at home, so we like to bring the recruits here and let them go to a football game. It's a good one tonight. Back to back. And Hampton tossed it up for the second time tonight. Benson with the fumble recovery. And NC State has the ball. The turnovers are everywhere tonight. Three turnovers for NC State, three for Arizona. Oh, my. But nevertheless, NC State hasn't been able to make hay out of their turnovers the way Arizona has, leading 14 to nothing, 546 to go in the half. The Wolfpack will have the ball at the 44-yard line. And Hampton has tossed it up twice. And Tim, very unusual for these Arizona backs. Very unusual, and you can expect to see Strynig if he's healthy in the next series. Montgomery with a check with knee call at the line. Short drop. This is his intended target, Al Bird, down to about the 48 yard line. So Shane Montgomery having a nightmare thus far, but remember, this man is used to throwing the ball. He can recover. He's set 4 of 14 at 29 yards and the big interception tonight. Montgomery choosing to go away this time from Darrell Lewis, working on Todd Burden down at the bottom. Al Bird having trouble with that ankle. You can see he's just not able to accelerate it, really come out of his break. It appeared as though he stumbled also, but it's just taken him too long to break down, and that just means he's got a bad ankle. Montgomery gets it to Barber out of the backfield. Barber with a first down and a little bit more to the 43-yard line. Chris White needs a stop. 5.34 to go in the first half from Tucson, Arizona, the first annual Copper Bowl with the Wildcats and the Wolfpack. First time these two have faced off. Also, first time the two teams have played. <laughs> it's the first time NC State has played anybody from the Pac-10. <laughs> NC State in that spread formation. Pressure from Arizona. 
He finds the tight end. All the way to the 23-yard line goes Todd Harrison. Arizona applied pressure. Montgomery read that well for a 20-yard completion. Well, that, this time Arizona chooses pressure, and they're bringing Chris right from the outside. And when they do that, they give up the short outside zone. You know, Alexander trying to get back, but that's the zone that has been vacated by Chris Wright. They're just thinking if the, if the quarterback can get this ball off and if he can find this one open area, then we're going to give that one to him. And that time, Shane Montgomery did it. Todd Harrison, 6'4", tight end from Gainesville, Florida. First down from the 22. And the inside handoff gets it to about the 18-yard line. Greg Manor with the carry, a power runner. Actually, it's pronounced Manor. The redshirt freshman from Rennie, Georgia. And NC State has been down here before tonight. They have been unable to get it into the end zone due to interceptions, turnovers. That'll be excellent defense. That'll be frustrating for Dick Sheridan. I mean, he's been looking at this game with his offense going in most of the evening, and he's behind 14 to nothing. Arizona, on the other hand, certainly cannot become overconfident. Uh, if it wasn't for Geyer's inter interception and a bomb, they'd be uh, it'd be nothing, nothing here. The inside handoff again down to about the 17-yard line. So it'll be third down and less than five for the Wolfpack. Just outside the 15 at the 16-yard line of Arizona. So the Wolfpack now with about 115 yards of total offense. Arizona with only 49 yards of total offense, yet leading in the ball game 14 to nothing. And the receiving core goes in there, Williams, Havlick, and Bird. One of the things I'm sure they told Montgomery is that don't don't put the ball at risk. Let's get on the board here now. And Varn, the back, the only back, has 41 catches coming into this game. So all our receivers in there. Five-man rush. Complete the bird. Turns it upfield and spins to the seven-yard line. The first down to NC State. Gain of nine yards for the Wolf Pack. A first down and goal, and they will spot it at the seven-yard line. Salem with the tackle. Good-looking play. They release the tight end, Neil Hour, inside. They throw the quick out here to Bird, and now you're going to see number 87 coming over. He keeps moving, keeps moving. He's going to try to pick off the defender, open up the area for Al Bird back to the inside. First down, nice-looking play. First and goal from the seven for the Wolf Pack. They've been unable to score thus far tonight. Three minutes remaining in the first half. Double tight end. Reggie Lawrence, the freshman receiver, out wide to the left. They hand it off to 22, Aubrey Shaw, who gets only about a yard. Down to the six, maybe five and a half yard line. Chris Singleton was there to make the stop. You know, and that's a long way to come at a sharp angle for an outside linebacker. That just displays what his real ability is. And he's going to be a fine linebacker in the, in the pros someday. About the five and a half is where they'll spot the ball. 232 to go for a half. Second down goal. Dick Sheridan had a outside linebacker last year. Uh, Scott Hour was all ACC, you know, the big impact player. And Singleton is bringing back memories. Same six. Here's the pitch. This is Shaw to the four. Coming up to make the hit, Scott Geyer. So Scott Geyer with two interceptions tonight, a big tackle on that play. It's been Geyer, Wright, Lewis, and that defensive secondary for Arizona joining with Chris Singleton on the Arizona defense has stood tall when they need to. Now we are at third down and goal from the four. By the way, coming up at halftime tonight, Craig Sager will take a look at the college bowls that have taken place, plus the big bowls tomorrow, and he'll look back at a wild decade of college football, the 1980s. This is the final game right here, folks, of the decade that you're watching right now. Some of the big college plays, some of the players who made impact. The last 10 years, a very special Western Heritage show, too, presenting some 700 band members from the University of Arizona and Tucson Area High School. First half highlight, mile night spectacular halftime. First annual Copper Bowl. One of the things that probably helps this Arizona defense and Dwayne, Dwayne Aquino, who's the defensive backfield coach, is they've got a young coach on this uh, Arizona squad named Johnny Lynn, who played for Dave Tomey at UCLA and also played for eight years with the New York Jets. So I'm sure Johnny passes on some, some hints to these young defensive backs. They're standing next to Dick Tomey. You also see Dave Fagg, who is leaving tomorrow and going to be the head coach at Davidson. Dave had previously been the head coach there and 
and they're bringing him back and just a fine man. Uh, as a matter of fact, he and Tommy had been on the Davidson staff in the mid-60s. So Shane Montgomery, third down passing statistics, and that's what we have here, a third and four at the four of Arizona. Then it's 59 to go in the first half. Ninth play of this drive, clearly the best one of the night for NC State. Shane Montgomery looking it over, trying to get a, get a free read as he can. He's got Barnes for the touchdown. Barnes' second catch of the night. And his second touchdown reception of the year. Ten-play drive for the NC State Wolfpack. And Shane Montgomery, after looking really ragged to open this ball game, now has a touchdown pass and he's thrown for 76 yards. Is 8 out of 18. And Barnes is a senior who's a tailback, moved over to fullback, and he can catch. We told you he had 41 receptions coming in, and the media, the NC State media that covered this team all year, voted him the MVP of this team because he can do so many things. And I think it's because he's got the kind of attitude that, uh, that people like to be around. No matter what the circumstance is, he's going to turn it into something good. Let's look at this again. This look, should look familiar to Georgia Tech fans. They scored on the same type of play against Georgia Tech. Williams cuts to the left, bar to the right. Arizona linebacker gets caught inside and six points for the Wolfpack. Let's look at it again. Shane dropping, looking to Williams, not there. Goes back to Barnes, touchdown. Todd Barnes from Casey, South Carolina. Shane Montgomery from Newark, Ohio. We talked to his dad, and I'm sure his dad is uh, Tom was in the stands tonight. He's been fighting his nails and worrying over his son's play, as all fathers do with sons. But he said, you know what? I'll tell you one thing about Shane. I'm proud of him no matter what. Now, however, I have a feeling he's a little proud. <laughs> well, he feels a little bit better for Shane. After such a uh, fine career at North Carolina State, you'd hate to go out the way that uh, the first half has gone for Shane anyway. Shane Montgomery had alternated at quarterback last year with Charles Davenport, Preston Pogue. I saw this team in the uh, radio broadcast of the Peach Bowl last year, and all three of the, the quarterbacks were involved. Now they've redshirted Davenport. Uh, Pogue is the punter, and Shane Montgomery is the man. He's had the most successful season in the history of any quarterback at North Carolina State. Here's that pop-up kick that Meese is so good at. However, it bounced out of bounds. And they'll probably bring it back. I said, so that looked like one of my golf shots. You know, that's what some people are thinking, a shank kickoff. But actually, Meese was trying to do that, as Bob pointed out. Actually, so, I should have said Brian Carter. Meese, of course, for Arizona. Brian Carter tried to pop that one over on the side. And both these teams used this to their advantage. If a, if a receiving team isn't prepared for that type of kick, they may let that ball drop, let it hit, and the actually the team that's covering the kick can come down and catch it and gain possession. But since it went out of bounds at the 36, then they're going to decline the penalty, and Arizona will take it right there at the 36. But it's, yeah, it's just like an extended onside kick. The last four Arizona possessions, eight plays minus six yards, two turnovers, two punts. They've not been able to move the ball. Stridening now in at fullback. Hampton, the starter at fullback, has fumbled twice. Stridening to replace him. Arizona in their hurry-up, two-minute offensive drill with a minute 40 to go in the half. Leading well down by the but Arizona's offense has not really done the job tonight in terms of the eye bone and that powerful rushing game that led the Pac-10 conference. Deal goes to the air this time. He takes it to Michael Bates, the freshman. He gets it out to the 47. Near the first down, depending on the mark of the ball. Campbell with the tackle. Time a simple slant by the outside receiver. It wasn't there. Deal decides to go to Bates. They may have to bring the sticks all the way across the field, and they're going to do that. Minute 19 to go in the first half of the first annual Copper Bowl from Tucson, Arizona, along with Jim Foley. This is Bob Neal with our TBS crew wishing you a very happy new year. Arizona leading NC State 14 to 7. Right in front of the NC State bench, they stretch out that chain. It is a first down Arizona. Joe Pate on defense as you look at Dick Sheridan. Uh, 
Joe Pate, the defensive coordinator here, talked about trying to give the Arizona option the eye bone different look. Don't ever let Ronald Veal look at the same thing twice. Vary the slant of the tackle. Vary, vary the slant of the, the uh, linebacker coming from the outside. Vary the man who's responsible for the quarterback. Try to confuse Ronald Veal. Nickelback for NC State. Veal takes a bad hit as he pitches to McGill. McGill gets five, ten, and a first down on the left side, and Veal paid a heavy price after the pitch. But Reggie McGill got the first down in a gain of 13 yards. It was Bobby Houston who really leveled Ronald Veal. Watch number 34. And you'll see him coming out of the right side of your screen. And that's his assignment. His assignment is to put your face mask on the quarterback's skin and uh, try to affect the, the direction of that throw. Now, he got that one off well. And you see McGill working upfield, keeping his feet, doing a great job. But I'll guarantee you, Veal's going to think about it the next time he runs it. I'll tell you what, the inside handoff for Arizona hasn't been going tonight. This is Stride McNeil this time. Ricky Logo, grandfather is a Samoan chieftain, made the stop. You see a freshman from Fort Benning, Georgia. You're right. Debnan, Agnew, Austin have just done a fine job. And also Haynes and Edmund Knight have filled in there from their linebacker position. That fullback handoff has just not been there for Dick Tomey's Wildcats tonight. Let's get on the field to Craig Sager. Former Arizona Wildcats with me, Dana Wells, the player of the year in 1988. Chuck Keith the player of the year in the Pac-10, 1987. You guys are enjoying the game, and obviously the defensive excellence continues. Yeah, they, uh, they're playing a great game tonight, and uh, defense has a change around here at Arizona. What about the offense? Well, <laughs> offense isn't playing too well right now, but hopefully they'll get on track. Uh, no, give NC, NC State credit. They're, they're playing well defensively also. I'm used to the Cincinnati Bengals made the best team in your division. You don't go to the playoffs. Packers just missed out as well. What's it like to be a spectator? Uh, it's a little different. Uh, I wish I was a spectator right now. Yeah, I didn't mind being in uh, Philadelphia today or <laughs> some other town playing rather than watching. Congratulations also, Chuck was just named the defensive player of the decade in the Pac-10. And when it's coming up at halftime, we'll look back at the entire decade of the ACC football. Back to back. What an honor. Pac-10 defenders, defensive player of the decade. There have been so many of them come out of this conference to go to the pros. 14 to 7 Arizona leads. McGill, McGill to the 24 and down, first down with 40 seconds remaining in the half. That was a gain of 16. They're getting into field goal range. Now this team, if they get inside the 20, is probably going to score. Who would you say that to? I would say that. I think the statistic that Bob is referring to is 94% of the time they've crossed the 20 yard line, they've gotten points on the board. Leading 14 to 7. This is first down 10, Arizona. They aren't in there yet, though, at the 24. Veal rifles it. Just past the outstretched arms of Kip Lewis, incomplete. It'll be second down 10. Well, that is a long throw. They're running those slots on out patterns. They're running the wide receivers on the double out pattern. And uh, for Veal to complete that pass, that ball has got to carry a long way. But he does have a strong arm. And talking to Rip Shear, he says, you know, Ronald Veal has got an excellent arm. And when he gets hot, when he gets rolling, uh, he is a fine, fine passer. Good velocity on that. Toss right there. This is second down to him. That's a 24-yard line now. 81 Jan Kyle slips along to the left side. He's a big target, a 6 4 receiver up to the top and out of the picture. Bates goes in motion. With the shovel pass, Scott Gill, who gets to the 17 yard line. First down markers at the 14. Clock down to 24, 23, and ticking. Two timeouts remaining in this half for Arizona. They're going to use one of them right now. It's the play that's been effective for them during the course of the year. You see the linemen pulling. Nick Finney on a nofo. Clearing the way for, for Reggie McGill. Hey, come on, don't laugh at this me. This is the all-main team. I practiced that. I practiced it. I practiced it. Finney and Ganofo. Exactly. Thank you. Here's a dollar. <laughs> I lose the bet. He's from Honolulu, which is why he's called Finney and Ganofo. <laughs> and, of course, the uh, there was a great touchdown pass earlier thrown from uh, Veal to number 21, Tim. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're not biting. No, that's Ogun Fidivani. You know, I mean, I got that down now. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of a Midwesterner. 
21 seconds remaining in the half. Hope you're having as good a time as we are on this New Year's Eve, wherever you may be. The final college football game of 1989. Coming up after 21 more seconds of football, Greg Sager at halftime has a spectacular halftime for you. You're going to want to see the highlights of the best plays of the decade. I've already voted for mine. It was the Flutie pass for Boston College against Miami, but there have been some incredible plays. So. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson didn't vote for that one. <laughs> Third down three. The play thing. Beal in the air. In the end zone. Kick Lewis. Incomplete. They say he was juggling it as he went out of bounds. Joe Johnson, 21 for NC State, was covering Kip Lewis, the senior. He went up, got his hands on the ball. The official signaled incomplete and also indicated he was juggling the ball. There's the man covering, junior Joe Johnson. And Ronald Neal put that one on the mark. That was a beautiful throw. The ball was in the air before the final move was made, and Joe Johnson stuck right with him all the way and, and fought for the football and tore it out. Gary Coston is going to attempt his first field goal of the year. He was an All-American, second-team All-American as a freshman. Lost his job to Doug Spaff. Spaff is injured tonight. Coston steps in with a chance for an important three points here. Coston said, hey, I'm well. I'm back from my injury. I can still kick. The 34-yarder is good, and it's 17 to 7, Arizona. Let's watch Neal try to stick it in there in the corner now. Comes back, rotates, lays the ball up, and the ball is well thrown. A lot of altitude on that ball because he was waiting for his receiver to get there. Thrown a little bit behind Kip Lewis. Goes up for the football. Comes down with the ball. But the referee says he's out of the end zone. Juggling the football. Good concentration on the ball. Two fine college athletes scrapping for the football. And uh, Sherman Lewis, back in San Francisco, wants that to be called good. <laughs> Thought it was a good call, though. Look at what. He, he was down out of bounds with his body when he finally had possession of the ball. So it's 17 to 7, Arizona leading NC State with 10 seconds remaining in the first half. Nick Tomey coaching as a head coach in his first bowl game. He was in Hawaii for 10 years and had some excellent teams there, but didn't get to a bowl game while there. Thought the Arizona team he coached here last year should have gone to the bowl. They did not get it. He was the WAC coach of the year in 1982, and while he was at Hawaii for 10 years, he had the second best record in the YAC. Uh, WAC. In the YAC? Only bettered by BYU. He comes from a great heritage of assistant coaches that you named earlier. What a staff he was on with Pepper Rogers at Kansas back in the late 60s. The ground ball kickoff goes in and out of the end zone, so with no time elapsed on the clock, 10 seconds for Shane Montgomery and NC State. They'll probably... I'm not it, no, I'm not going to do that. That's my New Year's resolution as a broadcaster. And these coaches came up very different very different very different paths i mean you talk about that Tommy. he was an assistant for bo Schembechler. he was an assistant for howard fletcher at northern illinois university for john pond at uh, miami and then you mentioned pepper rogers and uh donahue and, and uh Bermeo at ucla whereas most of sheridan's experience came at Furman under our state Nothing happening as NC State just going to run the clock out. Barber lost about a yard on the play. That'll be the final play of the first half. Arizona leads it 17 to 7. The big play of the half was the 85-yard interception return by Scott Geyer, who had two interceptions for Arizona. Arizona has stood tall defensively inside their 20 tonight, nullifying several NC State scoring threats. The Wolf Pack with a statistical advantage everywhere but on the scoreboard and in the turnover column let's go now to craig sager on the sideline well thank you very much bob dick told me with me you have a 17-7 lead obviously you got to be happy with that well we we got a lot of things we got to do better but we're tickled to death to be ahead but it doesn't count right now it doesn't matter what conference you're from obviously you have trouble with ray agner number 93 he's been giving teams trouble all year he's a great player they've got a lot of good ones in, and this is going to be a dog fight and it is right now so we've got a lot of work to do the running game isn't working real well. It appears that they're daring you to throw. Do you come out and throw more? In the well, we, we had success there there in the last drive throwing the football. And 
And I think we'll probably have to, we'll, we'll, we will throw the football more in the second half. Okay, now let's go back to Bob Neal. Thank you, Craig Sager. Veal did throw for 66 yards and 137-yard touchdown pass to Ogan Pedidemi, the uh, first touchdown pass of that youngster's career, and Arizona leads 17 to 7. Back at Arizona Stadium, the first annual Copper Bowl in Tucson, Arizona leads 17 to 7, and now the halftime features some outstanding bands, over 700 players on the field, dance teams from all over the country, along with some of Tucson's own talent, foot stomping and hand clapping, it's presenting a wild western extravaganza. Favorite western theme songs, the musicians are going to play a medley of Old West favorites, Rawhide, Ghost Rider, How the West Was Born, The Wild Wild West, and Magnificent. Magnificent Seven helps create some vision of cattle drive, dusty dirt roads, and the wild and free spirit of the Cowboys. <laughs> dancers take you back to the old saloon for an evening of gambling, drinking, fighting, and dancing, which may remind you of your own New Year's Eve party. Let's watch.
a test of skill and courage when the good, the bad, and the ugly take sides for the final shootout. to Arizona Stadium on the campus of the University of Arizona in Tucson for the first annual Copper Bowl. Arizona leads it 17 to 7. And Ron Veal has matched Shane Montgomery almost pass for pass. He has a touchdown pass. He's thrown for 66 yards. Montgomery threw for 76 yards. We thought that there would be a big disparity in the passing yardage between these two teams, but the big disparity has been Arizona's ability to keep NC State out of the end zone and the North Carolina State Wolfpack turnovers. You heard Dick Sheridan say that was the story and that the only changes that he would make in the second half was that they would, he hoped, execute better. NC State had won the toss, deferred their decision to the second half, so they will be receiving the kickoff from the University of Arizona to begin the second half. Dick Sheridan looking worried, as he should be, trailing by 10 to Pac-10 second-place team, the University of Arizona. And one of the things that's really limiting his ability to open things up is the injury to his wide receiver. Porter hasn't been in since uh, the second or third play of the game. Al Bird limping on an injured ankle. The Arizona team still in a huddle as the NC State team is ready to take the kickoff here. They're not even spreading out. Now they're sliding out here. John Meade is the kicker for Arizona. Barber and Joe Johnson back deep. And it's a short pop. It's an onside kick. It is loose at the 48-yard line of Arizona. They'll have to determine who got the ball. As Neese tried the onside, he just popped it down to the left side, and North Carolina State picks it up, and so it backfires on the Wildcat, and the Wolfpack will have it at the 49-yard line of Arizona. So when you try something like that, the obvious gamble is if it doesn't work, you got trouble. Darrell Lewis coming down the sideline. He's trying to get it out to him. The kick comes in short. The Wolf... Oh, gee whiz. That, that uh, almost went back to the uh, 
the Wildcats. Let's watch it here again. Tries to make the catch. He tries to make the catch. It's Don Hayden. And then must have been successful in his scramble for the ball. NC State first down. Montgomery pitches on the option. Down goes Tyrone Jackson with a loss on the play of about three. Back to NC State territory to the 48-yard line. Here's a look at the statistical story in the first half. The bottom statistics, the most significant, the three turnovers. And not really an offensive barrage, you know, but it's good defense, good play on the ball. We saw some great cornerback play from Darrell Lewis during the first half. We saw Joe Johnson making a nice play and a couple of long balls, and so it's been good defense. People like to see points, but it's fun to watch good defense also. Second down 13, Shane Montgomery. Hit as he throws, incomplete. Back in his face with the 47, Reggie Johnson. This is what NC State did on their drive. You see, they left the field goal on the fumble 23 times, and then the interception. That was Cavalich, uh, who was throwing from a split end position, trying to throw it to Bobby Jurgens on a, a trick play, and it was picked off by Scott Geyer. Then Scott Geyer also picked it off. There's Arizona. Uh, NC State first half drive, and the rest of the time did defensively. This will be third down 13. Fourth time that the, the Wolfpack has started in Arizona territory tonight, but they have the three turnovers. Nullify everything except the one second quarter touchdown. Montgomery looking over the middle for Bobby Jurgens, thrown behind him incomplete. It'll be fourth down. So NC State not coming up, firing very smoothly here to open the second half. Okay, let's watch number nine, Bobby Jordan, North Carolina State in the white. Chris w Wright working on him. You're going to see him break to the inside. Then you're going to see Todd Burden break into the picture. He's hanging in that intermediate zone to intercept any ball that's thrown in there. Ball thrown kind of high, but good coverage. Preston Post for the punt. Lewis is going to let it bounce. It takes a Wolfpack roll. Down to about the 16 and a half yard line. And one minute gone in the third quarter. Arizona leading 17 to 7 on Tuesday night. NBA action continues on our sister network, Turner Network Television, TNT. It'll be Phoenix at Madison Square Garden, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Then Thursday, back on the Superstation on TBS, Atlanta Hawks basketball, as Madison Square Garden will once again be the site for the game between the Knicks and the Atlanta Hawks. Arizona ball at their own 16, first down 10, leading it by 10. That'll be high bone formation. They give it to the tailback, right the ball. He finds some running room to the 27-yard line. A gain. Oh, Nothing man, real did fancy. Did he get the first down? Very close to it. Nothing real fancy about that one. No option there, just straight ahead power. You're looking at Bobby Houston down there. He, he's ready to play football. The battle going on in the line between Glenn Parker and Ray Agnew, a couple of at least all-conference performers. Bobby Houston uses his quickness to get in there to help on that tackle. They'll bring the six in to make the measurements. There's Houston. Pro scouts like him a lot. Senior from Maryland, as a matter of fact. They say they timed him under 4-4 at the 40. That's a linebacker. For a guy that kind of size, you know, that's uh, Lawrence Taylor kind of quickness. So, I mean, he's going to be a valuable asset to somebody. So it's a first down by inches for the Wildcats. Out to their 27-yard line. Striding to get pulled back. Bates goes into motion. Deal. Fakes the throw. Keeps it. Tackled at the line of scrimmage by Ray Agnew. That time they tried to get Bates up the seam, Bob. They tried to get Jesse Campbell to bite on the option, to attack the option, and try to hit Bates up the seam, but he, but he did an excellent job hanging back in there. See that NC State has been very unsuccessful running the ball on first down. Second down here. Griffith goes in motion and lines up on the right side to tie it in, hand off and again again, hit right at the line of scrimmage. That was Ray Agnew making the stop again, the Atlantic Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year, the senior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. 
Okay, now you're looking at the eyeball here, and actually in a wishbone formation, that other back would be over here instead of back here. They move the tail back into the backfield in order to give a, more of a cutback option to the man with the ball. And now it's just a power drive. He's got an ability to take it back all the way to the weak side, something that you don't get from a wishbone formation. Third down nine. Here's the pitch to the field. Penalty markers are down in the secondary of NC State, and the gill is down at the 32-yard line. One of the Arizona Wildcats slow to get up. That's Paul Poppelmeyer, the center. He alternates at center with Dave Borland. Being attended to by the Wildcat trainers, and Borland will go in for the replacement. Arizona leading in this game by a score of 17 to 7. We have 12 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter of the first annual Copper Bowl. It was about 60 degrees at game time tonight. A beautiful sunny day here in Tucson, but in this desert community, the temperatures fall pretty rapidly at night. Tim Foley is already gone to his top coat. Hey, I went to my top coat as soon as we got out of those lights, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> below 60, really. Top below coat. 60, you know. When you get a hint of seeing your breath, that's top coat weather. But it's a beautiful, beautiful night. It was a great day. The weather's been fantastic out here, except for when I played golf. Right. I wonder if there was a message there. The message was you should have been at the luncheon. <laughs> I was on a mission to play golf, and I did get to, to, to enjoy it very much. It's a great resort community. A lot of folks from the particularly western part of the United States vacation in these resorts in the foothills and mountains around Tucson. Tucson's about 120 miles southeast of Phoenix but you knew that. On the fourth and five, John needs to punt for Arizona. Not much of a punt, Jenkins. He does get the bounce, though. Anderson grabs it. Oh, what a dangerous play he made. Didn't get anything out of it either. The Wildcats covered it beautifully and dropped him back here at about the 21-yard line. Resulted into a 44-yard punt and a loss of three on the return. From Arizona Stadium, 11.48 to go in the third quarter. Arizona leading it 17-7. to The 44-yard uh, punt and then a very dangerous attempt by Barry Anderson to field the bouncing off long ball. And uh, he lost three yards on the play, but the Wolfpack has it after 21. Let's see if North Carolina State can uh, resurrect their running game. Get something going on the ground to give... Montgomery a little bit of a protection when he has to throw the ball. He's going to throw on first down. Has some time. There's a penalty marker down as he hits Charlie Cobb, his offensive left guard right in the back. Charlie Cobb is 74. And that's the penalty against the Wolfpack. So Dick Sheridan, after, and, and you, we pointed this out in the first half, they had a very focused week of practice with this football team, and he sees himself destructing in this game tonight. It's illegal downing of the ball, hitting his offensive lineman in the back. Ineligible receiver, and a loss of down. And it's the same pattern they ran earlier, the one that they had some success with, bringing Bird across the middle. Montgomery decides that it's not there as he sees the Wildcat defender sitting in the middle of the field. Bird tries to get rid of it. Unsuccessfully. Wanted to hit Jackson, instead hit Cobb in the shoulder. Jackson out to about the... 18-yard line. Well, NC State late in the second quarter and now in this quarter been frustrating trying to move the football. And another player is injured. For the Wildcats. I'm going to say it's Scott Geyer. We'll just hold on a second, but I believe that's who it's down. Here comes Dick Tony, their coach out on the field at check over Geyer, who had, if it is Geyer, and I believe it is, he had two interceptions in the first half and has been playing tremendous football at free safety, and he replaced Hammerschmidt, who was already injured, the starting all-conference free safety. 
We're going to take a commercial timeout. We're not even positive that that is Geyer yet. As you can see, we couldn't see the number, but we'll check on it and report on his condition after this. Scott Geyer is right behind the man holding the flag on the sideline. Number 22, he's okay. They held him off the field. Arizona has been leveled with injury. George Malarulu is the quarterback who's a very good passer. was injured earlier. Hammersmith, all conference. Mike Parker, he's uh, injured now. You saw the list of him. They've just been devastated with him during the year. But it's good news. Geyer looks to be okay. Shane Montgomery hit as he throws. There's going to be a penalty marker out near the 40-yard line. The pass intended for Jurgen, and it was 37 Richard Holt covering. So I think they may throw the penalty marker against Richard Holt in Arizona. That's the call. Let's look at this again, uh, Bob. As you know, one thing I don't believe in is pass interference. <laughs> Shane Montgomery rifles it out there under pressure. Holt in good shape, playing the ball, and they call that pass interference. You, I now, know look, you don't I like really, that. I mean, that wasn't even close. If they're going to call it, call it on offensive guy. Give me a break. Well, <laughs> Scott Geyer is back in the game. That's the good news. That's for a, a, an unusual, in an unusual part of our relationship, I agree with you on that one. <laughs> Let's watch this again. Let's watch this bad call again. <laughs> I believe North Carolina State should get some breaks. If Not anybody, in, if anybody initiated contact, it was Jurgen setting back toward the ball. Nevertheless, here's the pitch to Bobby. Locked at the 30 yard line. The Singleton was over there. Every time NC State has tried that play tonight, Singleton has been there. Or Darryl Lewis. Lewis. Right, exactly. They should feel particularly bad because Chris Singleton messes up a lot of uh, offensive strategy. He just happens to spit out blockers and make the play. He may be a first-round draft choice. People think he's one of the top three linebackers in the country. And that's the position that these pros are going after now. You know, that outside linebacker that can really explode off the ball and get into the pocket. 6'3", 250, he's the prototype. Second down, 12 now for NC State. Montgomery to throw. Incomplete. He had Todd Varn open. You don't see that happen much. Nice throw by Shane Montgomery. Put that on the nose. Barn had beat his man to the inside, just didn't make the catch. And he's sure-handed. Had 41 catches before this ball game tonight during the season, did Todd Barn. Quarterback in a situation like this, he's just got to keep his confidence up. He's got to keep talking to himself, himself, try to reaffirm himself. Because he can't afford to let that confidence dissipate. Montgomery 0 for 5 in the air here in the second half. That's a third down 12. He went right back to Varn. Varn stayed in bounds and got close to the first down. They may have to bring the stick. I think he got it by maybe the length of the football. A great job of tiptoeing down the sideline by Todd Varn, who came back after the drop ball. Reggie Johnson was right in Montgomery's face. Let's see it again. This time they try to get some pressure. They're coming up field. Montgomery lets it go as he's leveled. Varn finds an open area in that zone and pulls that tight ropes up the sideline. And got the first down. He did Todd get the first down. Casey, South Carolina. From the 44-yard line now, the Wolfpack trailing the entire ball game, trailing 17 to 7 here. Montgomery wanted to do something with the option, but they just closed it down too quickly. Barber was out there, but the penetration upfield, Reggie Johnson and Singleton, if you're going on that, that left defensive side, you've got problems. If it isn't Johnson, it's Singleton, and if it's not those two, it's Daryl Lewis over there. Let's look at number 87, Chris Singleton, Singleton from Park Symphony, New Jersey. Reggie Johnson gets the penetration up the middle. Singleton sitting on the outside, waiting to play the option. But uh, Johnson fought through his block and makes a play. Second down, 11. Spotted at the 43-yard line. Montgomery hadn't completed a pass in this half to Vaughn just a moment ago. Now he's done two, two in a row. This is now Bird breaking tackles. He fumbled the ball. Was he down already? The officials say it's Arizona ball. Donnie Salem has fallen on it. That 
will be four turnovers. With the naked eye, prior to a replay, which we're going to get a chance to see in a moment, but the naked eye, it looked like he was down when the ball came in. Let's see. Gino Alexander was the man making the tackle. And this is one of the few times that they've caught Arizona in a straight zone defense. Geyer tries to make the camp tackle, can't do it. Bird fighting for extra yardage. Zeno Alexander drags him down, and it looked like on the way down, the ball popped out. Yeah, there goes a good call. This is Sapp trying the left side. Now, yeah, they got him before his knee went down. It was raked loose, and there's some hot heads on the sideline now. Bad place for NC State to get mixing it up over there in the bench at Arizona. They're breaking it and clearing it up. Not quite as damaging as it might look at this point. The NC State players and Arizona players, uh, I think, exhibiting a lot of restraint there. That could have been ugly. It turns out not to be. Well, but both of these teams display the, I think, the quality and character of their coaches. But a lot of restraint. These players, remember, this is a game of contact and violence on the field. And when that thing gets broken loose over there with 70 young, 18, 19, 20 year old young men on the sideline, so they broke it up. I didn't even see that there was a penalty marker done. Well, maybe, but I don't see one. I think, I think they were both headed toward the sideline with such velocity that momentum, momentum carried them out under the bench. Well, let's take a look at that fumble once again, see if Bird did. And I think it was stripped loose, Tim, as you see here. Zeno Alexander, it's out right now, coming down. Good pursuit by the big linebacker. In case makes it. Well, once again, the middle is plugged up by the NC State defense. Hampton gets about a yard or two, not much more than that. 9.05 to go third quarter, along with Jim Foley. Bob Neal with you from Arizona Stadium in Tucson, Arizona, the first annual Copper Bowl. Now, you may wonder why Copper Bowl, a very big copper mining area here in the southern part of Arizona. Look at the difference in the turnover margin. The first hit six games when the Wolf Pack was undefeated. They were plus 12. The last six, minus 12. Tell me this one. Third down, seven down. He went to the top, hits on the ground. Sapp is down, but he maintained possession of the ball. Seven turnovers in this football game. Today. Three for Arizona, four for NC State. Number two is Los Angeles City Player of the Year. He's a freshman from Carson, California, suburb of Los Angeles. Beal just didn't get one, this one out there. You see Houston coming from the back, and Agnew has been a problem all night long. Parker did not play against Arizona State, and uh, obviously still being nagged by an injury is having trouble controlling Ray Agnew. This will be John Meade's sixth punt from the night. Almost got it. At the 12 yard line by Barry Anderson. The Wolfpack will be in the hole. That was a good punt by Mees of 41 yards with 7.45 remaining in the third period. Play the golf course there from the top of days. It's tough. It looks like tough a good time. place to hide out <laughs> if you really get in trouble, right? Butch Cassidy. Uh, they went, I think that's when he had the great line. Uh, who are those guys? And they were probably right near those mountains hiding out. That's what both these offenses are saying. <laughs> who are those guys? It's been a defensive battle. Arizona leads at 17 to 7. Arizona had an 85 yard interception return by Scott Geyer. The Wolfpack first and 10 from their 12. They'll give it to the tailback. Little running room for Tyrone Jackson this time. He gets across the 15 to the 18 yard line. Jackson is a sophomore from Temple Hills, Maryland. He's 5'8, 185. They're, they're back, you see the, the disparity in height. He and the rest of those offensive players. And as you mentioned, all their backs are kind of micro men. None of them are very tall, but great quickness and balance and acceleration. Gain of six on that play. Montgomery, with a big seven-yard drop, has his man open at Chavlik. Great 
job of keeping his feet in bounds at the 38-yard line. Notice how he kept them both in. He's a senior. He wanted to show the pro scout. Okay, Mike, that was one for you. Cavalich beat Lewis on this one, and Montgomery drops the throw, dragging that tight end across, and has plenty of time. Nobody in his face. He can relax and get it out there, and Cavalich gave Darrell Lewis a nice little shake and broke it to the sideline and actually turned Darrell Lewis upfield. Good route, Mike. 114 yards in the air for Montgomery now. That's a first down out to the 38 yard line. Blue State trying to come from behind. They hand it to Vaughn. They get to the 40. We, speaking of coming from behind, we talked to Shane Montgomery about how he feels coming from behind. You know, even if we're forced to throw the football, I think there's always going to be a receiver open. I just have to do my job of reading uh, reading the coverage and getting it to the right person. And as long as I do that, and as long as uh, you know we're working well as offense, we're clicking, I'm getting the time to throw, and, and we're opening up holes in the running game, you know, I still feel uh, no, no matter how far we're behind that we can still come back. Montgomery's thrown 25 times. Arizona and Ron Beal have thrown only 10 times in the game so far tonight. Second down eight. The play fake. Montgomery taking it upstairs again, looking deep. Incomplete at the 20-yard line. That was Reggie Lawrence, the freshman, trying to battle the ball loose. That's the second time they've tried to go up over the top of Reggie Lawrence, and that's the second time that Scotty Geyer has been back there waiting for the ball to come down. That time, though, Shane Montgomery did not have anything open underneath. Burden had broken to that little curl, and there was just no one home that time. Reggie Lawrence has the deep speed, but remember, he had arthroscopic surgery after the last regular season game, if you can believe that or not. Tim, with all the cutting that you had to undergo during your pro career, I bet you wish they had the arthroscope then. Yeah, they didn't have any little knights back then. They're only big ones. Ah, <laughs> team <thaws. laughs> Shane Montgomery completes another one to Varn. Look at him run hard. He gets the first down to the 50-yard line, knocks Richard Holt into, into January. <laughs> which isn't too far. <laughs> if you're matter matter of fact, let's see, on the East Coast right now, help me with this, it's about an hour and three minutes from midnight. Is that right? That's about two hours and three minutes from midnight. <laughs> let's watch him work on, on Chris Singleton here, Bob. Number 87. How do they keep him out? He accelerates off the ball, pounding up field. And that's a good job by Robert Brown of driving him deep, driving him around the quarterback. Montgomery stands up in there and releases it to Todd Barnes for first down. Good job, Robert Brown. He's been alternating in there with Scott A. Bell. These teams keep stopping the clock via the pass route to first down. The what not this game could go right into my team now. <laughs> On the first down from midfield. Huh? To the air. Montgomery wide open is his tight end. This is Todd Harrison. Harrison to the 26-yard line of Arizona, gain of 24. Burden with the stop. Harrison's a big guy, 6'4", 250. Little fake here. They suck up Donnie Salem and pop it in over the top. Both the safeties playing very deep on a two-deep zone. Nobody can get there in time. A good call. Very effectively executed by Montgomery. Delivers the ball in a hurry. And Harrison heads up field. Two catches for Harrison for 44 yards. In the game. It's a first down. NC State trailing it by 10. The inside handoff goes to Greg Mayer, the fullback, keeping the runner. Chase making the stop. Time remaining in the third quarter. A little over five and a half minutes. And the idea of that tight end, little tight end flare, little tight end up is to try to back those linebackers out of there. Salem has been very effective doing that to Darren Chase. They've just been sacking things. They've been, they've been picking off the uh, leftovers that the uh, Gattis and Hayes and Reggie Johnson are throwing up. Second down, 10. You get down this part of the field, Arizona gets to be very tough defensively. Just after him, he's going to be done. Incomplete. He was looking for his tight end again. Chris Williams is also down there, but still with some severe coverage. Chris Wright, closest man to the ball, number 31. Well, that time he had a shot at it, and he had motion. There was some confusion in the Arizona defense, and, and he had a chance to get it to the tight end, but he looked like he threw it in the middle. Had a little trouble getting it out from the center, and, uh, you know, he is under pressure. As Wright makes a, a dive for the ball, 
It was the receiver running down the sideline. The tight end here had a shot for that, but uh, he was under pressure there. It affected his accuracy. Nice play of the drive. Here's the blitz. He gets rid of it. Incomplete. Al Bird was there. Tight coverage, but Bird just couldn't hold on to the ball. On the third down call, the blitz came. Chris Singleton led the way with the pressure. Good play to have on against the blitz. Could have been an automatic. This could have come from Shane Montgomery. Not much time to get rid of it. The outside receiver drives to the inside. Darrell Lewis comes off, and Al Bird should have had that one. There's no question about it. Who knows that? This will be a 43-yard field goal attempt on the fourth down attempt with Damon Hartman. He missed a 50-yard attempt earlier tonight in the first quarter. is good. It is now a seven-point ball game. A 43-yard field goal from sophomore Damon Hartman of Roswell, Georgia. And it's a 10-point Arizona lead with 4.53 to go in the third. And here's Craig Sager. Well, thank you, Bob. With me is the president of the Copper Bowl, Larry Brown. And obviously, the crowd much better than some people that anticipated a great game. We're delighted. We're delighted with the crowd to turn out the weather in the game. Can it get any better? For most of us here for the first time, it's a natural to shot in a bowl game. Why have you never had one before? I don't know. I guess enough people didn't stick to it long enough to get it here. We tried, well, they had an All-American type All-Star game here uh, 18, 15, 18 years ago, and uh, we've never had a full-fledged bowl game like this. So this is the first one. Your last week lately? No. <laughs> well, good beginning makes for a good ending, and obviously the Cotton Bowl is off to a good beginning. Thank you. We appreciate all the help from you guys and all fans of Tucson to come out and support. It's been great. Back to Bob Neal. Thank you. The player down on the field is Arnuf Mobley, a junior linebacker for Arizona. They're looking him over as NC State gets ready to kick off after they've made this a seven-point game. Obviously, it's the left knee of Mobley that they're looking at. And it's a, it's a tough job. You and I have done several bowl games. It's a tough job to get a bowl game started in a place where it hasn't been. They started trying to get a bowl game here back in 1981, finally got the approval. And the, surprisingly to me, the local media wasn't as supportive, particularly the print media, supportive as I thought they would be for a community. This is a great event for a community. It's a great event and something that can really blossom and mushroom into something important for the community and you can't expect you can't expect to uh, have the same type of results that bowls that have been in business for 20 years have. You have to start someplace and Larry Brown and his crew, Merle Miller and all those guys really should be congratulated because this has all gone off with very few glitches. They've done a fine job and and the NCAA, I think, has made it hard. They're not sure they want any more new bowls. They want to kind of limit the proliferation of these things. At the seven-yard line, this is Harold Sapp. He's down now at the 20. Good coverage by 34 Blitz Dippers for NC State. A return of 13 yards on the kickoff. And the Wolf Pack only seven points away from the University of Arizona. Yeah, we were talking to Dick Sheridan, a lot of the Wolf Pack uh, uh, contingents out here, and they said, you know, this is a unique experience. Tucson, Arizona is a beautiful place. It's been mild temperatures here, like a high of 60, which is cool for this time of year. But it's beautiful. Blue skies, plenty of things to do, and I think it's going to be a good location for a bowl. place that football players would like to come have a good time after a successful season. Look at that Wolfpack defense. Earl Sapp hit by Barry Anderson, number 20, initially. Everybody else was there. Arizona has rushed, excuse me, Tim, Arizona has rushed for less than 50 yards in this game. And remember, they are the Pac-10 rushing champions. And they have been averaging 380 yards a game. I mean, they've been, they've been doing a fine job moving the football. And so that's just a real testimony to Joe Pate and his Wolf Pack defense. 4-11 to go, third quarter. Deal under pressure. He releases it to Hampton, the fullback. Hampton drives out to the 35-yard line. Nate Vincent makes the stop for the Wolf Pack. Hampton is second leading receiver on this team coming into this game with 10 receptions during the year. And Mario Hampton trying to redeem himself a little bit, has fumbled the ball a couple of times. It's Derek Denham in Veal's face. Veal dumps it, really throws it underneath his arms, and Mario Hampton running back against the grain, picks up a first down. 
Hampton only a sophomore from Tulare, California. Six feet, 220. On the first down now for the Wildcats from their own 35. Deal eludes the tackler and goes for first at about the 33. Bobby Houston. Number 34. Deal never really had time to take a look. Makes the play fact fake here. Houston beats the block inside. Deal uses his quickness to avoid it momentarily. Cash is coming. And down he goes. Good decision by Eddie Deal. This is Bobby Houston. Look at him. 6'2, 224. What'd you say? 435, 438. Under 4 4 in the 40. <laughs> Linebacker. Second down, 12. From the 33 for the Wildcats. Deal to the air. He intended it for number eight, Reggie McGill. It may have been tipped by Debnam. Debnam's number 91. Nevertheless, the pass goes incomplete. You know, Rip Shear, the offensive coordinator here, trying to mix in the pass. Dick Comey said, going into the locker room, we'll throw the ball more in the second half. They're trying to get some success in that area. The problem is, if they're not successful on first down, they are in a what turns out to be a must-pass situation, and that's a situation in which they don't come out the winner often. Arizona 0 for 8 on third down conversions tonight. 0 for 8. This is third down 12. Deal's not going to get the conversion again. They're 0 for 9 on third down conversions. He goes down about the 37-yard line, and John Knees comes in to punt the football again. This will be Knees' seventh punt of the night. Another good job by Buddy Green, secondary here at North Carolina State. People are covered. Pro Scout's interested in knees. He's got a good, strong leg from a one-step punter. He's also capable of kicking off. And he's got a pretty good size. He's 6 feet, 210. Was a wide receiver for you. Getting the punt. will get the fair catch. They'll actually spot it right on the 20. Part of 43 yards. In fact, in that time with no return. Minute 58 to go. Third quarter. With Arizona leading 17 to 10, it's a defensive struggle as the offenses struggle. However, Chad Kane, the offensive coordinator for NC State, the team came off the field last time after scoring just a field goal, said, we're going to win this game. He feels that Arizona's defense has become predictable. The coaches on the sideline know what Arizona's going to do defensively. The key is Todd Harrison, the tight end, who has to go out on the pass route, and if he is open, they're going to throw the ball to him. If not, he has to block the safety as they throw deeper. Back to Bob. Uh, I hope I got all of that. <laughs> I have a feeling Arizona disagrees, but they're not trying to play the game. Montgomery on a first down 10. Wanted to go right over the middle to Al Bird. That Arizona defense, predictably, was right there to break it up. Right, Bird. And as the game goes on, that's one of the that's one of the strengths of a good coaching staff. That's one of the benefits that both these staffs have. They've been together for a while. They know how each other how they each other think. And they know what they're looking for to try to establish some consistent tendency from a defense or an offense for that matter. This is the ninth time this year that Montgomery has thrown at least 30 passes. Go, 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 go. This is 31 passes in this ball game. Jackson with a couple of yards. Uh, in those eight regular season games, NC State won five of them. Generally speaking, when a team Shane Montgomery said this earlier. If he has to throw it more than 25 or 30 times, means they're unbalanced, means they're probably trying to come from behind, and it's a tougher win. Unless you just have a superior offensive line, and you've got excellent wide receivers that have an understanding of the passing game, you don't want to have to live by that. Offensive line, Hawley out for the game, and injured left guard, O'Frant playing with the flu. That pass was intended for Chris Williams. Broken up, and the penalty marker came late, and Chris Wright got erupted. Penalty marker in the Arizona Wildcats secondary. Now, I think they're going to call this on Salem. Salem was working against Todd Harrison. The pass was intended for Harrison. That's holding against the defense, Arizona. You hear the boo from the... Hometown crowd. 
Salem's 54. Let's see if we can pick it up. Todd Harrison releases to the outside. The left side of your screen here. You can see Salem on Harrison there, and I think that was the call. Nobody else was close enough. Donnie Salem had been in contact with Harrison, but you know, in, in professional football, that's interference. So he's more than five yards uh, upfield, but looks like a clean jam from here. First down on the defensive holder out to the 33-yard line. Montgomery under pressure goes down. Coming right up the middle, Darren Case, the inside linebacker from Tempe, Arizona. That's the first sack of the night. Shane would have liked to have a second to get this one off. Had some possibilities here, but they bring six here. You see, right get clipped on the top. The case is right up the middle. Montgomery didn't have anything to think about but self-preservation there. Back to the 25-yard line. Second down, 18. 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Arizona leading it by seven. Crowd getting into the defensive play by Arizona. Montgomery overthrows everybody, and Geyer almost had his third pickoff of the night. Al Bird, the intended receiver, closest man to the ball, was Scott Geyer. The best chance that Shane Montgomery and the Wolfpack has right now is to throw it outside. They're sitting Burden down right over the middle at about 15 yards. Geyer is deep. They're giving it a three-deep look. The best shot they have to complete passes is to throw it on the perimeter, throw it outside. And if I had to throw it outside, I'd throw it away from number four. Third down, 18 from the 25. Here's Arizona's coming. Yes, they are. And Montgomery, very effective in getting rid of the ball under pressure. He threw it toward a receiver, say the official. 92 Reggie Gaddis may have been the closest man to him. We said, was Arizona going to come? The answer was definitively yes. Now look at Shane coming out of there now. He's got to be double-jointed to get this ball off. You know, he ducks Gaddis. <laughs> or he's going to be double-jointed after it. You know, he was already arguing his case to the official that it wasn't grounding, and it was not grounding. He had a man out there. He's trying to put toward Todd Barnes. He's just going to cut the screen. Todd is Arizona came after Preston Cole. By the way, the Wolves is going to fair catch it at the 37-yard line to Arizona. 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. 38-yard punt by Pogue. And Arizona takes over possession of the ball, leading the by seven. Arizona Stadium here in Tucson. Here downtown Tucson, beautiful University of Arizona campus. Good grief. They're averaging four and a half yards per rusher in the season, and Against the Wolf Pack, Wolf Pack it's 1.5 yards. Now remember, they're also operating without David Eldridge, and he was their top tailback during the season. Reggie McGill, who took his place carrying in that position, carrying the ball out near the 40. Eldridge suspended for NCAA rules violations. Some of the local press, or not the local press, but it's been reported widely uh, that he uh, failed a drug test. Another Arizona player was also suspended prior to the bowl game. We'll be right back here for the fourth quarter. After From their own 40-yard line, second down, seven. In the regular eye formation this time for field of throw. It is incomplete. The 46 yard line of the Wolfpack intended for Chip Lewis. And there's Ron McBride, the offensive line coach here at Arizona. Been here for a couple of years. Been an assistant coach for 26 years. And after this game, he heads to Salt Lake City to become the head coach. Utah, he's turned out 30 professional athletes. Very, very fine offensive line coach, a lot of fun, an inspirational guy, and I'm sure he'll be very successful at Utah. Arizona last in the Pac-10 on third down conversions. They have yet to convert a third down tonight. Veal still alive to try this one. It is incomplete. They don't get it again. Arizona, 0 for 10 on third down conversions tonight. Houston covering Chip Lewis on the play. 
Houston actually didn't receive the ball first. Zeal never really has time to set up as Houston beat Mario Hampton. Hampton comes back to try to help out Zeal. Tough throw against your body, running to the right, throwing back to the left. Lee with his eighth punt of the night. There have been six NC State punts. First man down, 54, Donnie Salem. Salem makes the tackle, the first guy to make contact with our friend, Daryl Lewis. That guy's, he's putting some miles on those cleats tonight, isn't he? Well, hello from the booth high above the stadium here at Arizona Stadium in Tucson. That was a surprise view. I was looking, looking at our monitor watching that one. I thought, oh, look at those great looking party animals. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Bob and Tim, Jesse James, and Doc Holliday from Tucson. Happy New Year to you. 1434 to go to the score. <laughs> the play fake, Montgomery. Tended for Cavalick. Incomplete out there at about the 17 yard line. Took that ball forever to get over there. I'm sure that's what Montgomery was thinking. Lewis was covering on the play. Darrell Lewis, number four. There's no telling how many times an assistant coach's heart beats during the time that this ball is in the air. Daryl Lewis making a break on the ball, almost comes up with an interception, but that was the right place to go to it as we go with it. As we said before, they got to throw it outside. He wanted the tight end, the tight end was covered, threw it outside. This will be second down set. There's a leading it by seven. Goes to the left side and Barn gets out about a yard shy of the first down to the 19. Barn has seven carries for 23 yards tonight. NC State has rushed for 62. The Wildcats have rushed for sort of 47. These defenses have been all night long. It's not as though the offensive coordinator is here for Arizona. And uh, Ted Kane for for uh, North Carolina State haven't been changing things up. They've been maneuvering. They've been coming with different strategies, but just great defensive play on both sides of the ball. Double tight ends on third down one for the Wolfpack. Big conversion to Fifth here. It is close. That was Shaw diving. It looked like he did not cross the 20. He would have had to have crossed it for the first down. They'll unpile him, and they say, yes, he did. <laughs> you could have fooled me. <laughs> By an inch, maybe. Nevertheless, they'll move the six. Chris Singleton saying, I'm headed to the pros. How about an instant replay on that one? An official's review. I think the fourth quarter is going to continue to be like the first three quarters. It's going to be just hard knocking, smacking back and forth. And there'll be a couple of plays that occur during this quarter that are going to make the difference. A couple of big plays. The Arizona with 33 yards in the back. They lead, nevertheless, 17 to, 17 to 10. And that is a first down. Out to the first. The ball came loose. It was after the play this time. That will remain in the possession of NC State after a game of 12 yards. It was Al Bird who coughed it up. He fumbled the ball earlier, and it went to Arizona. But this time, the play was dead. That could have been an automatic, Bob, because what, what was happening on that play is that the corner came. He blitzed. When Arizona does that, at times, they will not replace that zone. That zone will be vacant. Bird just pulled up. James felt the pressure. Montgomery let it go back to the weak side, and a... First down. From the 33-yard line. Trying to keep him honest with the run. It's Tyrone Jackson with about seven or eight across the 40. Donnie Salem makes the stop. NC State showing signs of moving the ball against Arizona here. You heard Craig Sager's report that the offensive coaches for NC State felt that they had a handle on what the Arizona Wildcat defense was giving them and they thought they could start to take advantage of it. Let's see. From the 43 yard line of the Wolf Pack, trailing by seven, fourth quarter. The handoff goes to Maynard. And he is short of the first down on the second down call. 
He's a freshman power runner. Needed some more power that time. Eight the nose guard makes the stop for the line. Again. Arizona has played good defense in short yardage situations. In goal line situations, three times the opposition has had the ball first and goal on the one this year and not scored. Taking a long time to get that play in. Third down and one. Montgomery kept it, dived forward and picked it up. Just edged over around the right side of center Kent Jordan. And it is another first down for the Wolfpack. Montgomery decides to slip to the right on this short yardage. I Kent Jordan, number 61, follows him. Charlie Cobb, number 74, who's in there. Slides his way out there. And a Wildcat Arizona player is down on the field. On the and yes, the nose guard, the senior continues. Well, I think uh, for me as a quarterback, I just have to remain calm and keep the rest of the guys in the huddle calm and know that, uh, you know, we've came back all year and it's not, you know, it's uh, not a dodge situation. We, we can still, we feel like we can move the ball on anybody. The voice of Shane Montgomery, who's only down by seven points. And by the way, Ken Hake, 65 for Arizona, is being helped off of the field. By his teammate, you see Anthony Smith helping him. Anthony Smith knows about injuries. He had arthroscopic surgery on his right knee after the Southern Cal game. And it was 94 Smith helping him off the field. First down 10 for the Wolfpack from the 44-yard line of Arizona. Wolfpack trailing it by 7. 11.26 to go in the first annual Copper Bowl. Anthony Barber tries the left side. And some blocking out there. About three or four yards. Barber now with 16 carries has 41 yards. He's been the workhorse in the backfield for the Wolfpack. Lawrence coming off the field now. They had, their, they had the bomb squad in there. Reggie Lawrence is the one guy I think that could get deep on these Arizona quarterbacks. The man that has a chance. Cavalick and Bird are the receivers now wide left and right on the second down six. Barber in a wing to the left. It's completed to Barn out of bounds at the 48-yard line. The Wolfpack first down six. He's at the 46, a gain of four. Once again, they release Harrison to the outside, trying to stretch that zone a little bit. His first read of the tight end, it's not there, and he wings it out to Todd Varn. Varn takes his eyes off it a little bit early, or he could have picked up four or five more yards upfield before Darrell Lewis was able, was able to react and come back. This is third down two, and this is the 19th third down conversion of this game for NC State. The 77th offensive play. And it is Aubrey Shaw getting the first down and a few more yards. Look at his extra effort. Oh, my, stepped out of bounds at the 35. But what an effort by Aubrey Shaw, the freshman from Hartsville, South Carolina. Tremendous job of running the ball in traffic. A gain of 13. Good effort here. It almost looked like the Wolfpack jumped a little bit on the right side, but Shaw's to the outside. Darrell Lewis can't make the stop. Wright can't hang on. And look at that guy. Geyer is there. To Zeno Alexander finally pulls him out of bounds. I think he's rested. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think, Bob? Fresh leg. Fresh That's leg. That's it, man. Just keeps on trucking. Great effort. On the first down at the 35-yard line of Arizona, trailing by seven. They just give it a Shaw again. And he gets to about 33 before he goes down. You know, they've several times tonight, they've come close, and Dick Sheard knows that they've come close to bust the net. The seam, they just can't quite get to the seam. Now it's another close one. Dick Tony's a little bit concerned about the inconsistency of his offense. And he knows that after a while, his defense is going to wear down. What a job he's done with this program. What a new defense here in Arizona. Western Tender in the Pac-10. Back 
couple of years, they thought they planned to continue to be contenders. Gundy has man wide open. It is complete for the first down to Reggie Lawrence at the 23-yard line. Nice job keeping his feet in bounds. He too is a pretty. feeling good about himself. One of the things that he's doing, he's finding Daryl Lewis and throwing the other way. This time he rifles it out to the outside. Again, we said they needed to start to work on the perimeter, started to work on the sidelines. Arizona State is jammed up in the middle of the field. There's Montgomery's numbers for the night. He had only 76 yards at halftime, so 100 yards here in this half. Shaw hit in the backfield. Excellent penetration from Anthony Smith. Was that Anthony Smith? Yes. Number 94, the senior, who played in his fourth bowl game. He's a transfer from Alabama. While at Alabama, he played in three bowl games, and he's coming off arthroscopic knee surgery. Played for Ray Perkins for two years, played for Bill Curry for a year. Laid out of football, and I think uh, Rip Steers with his contact here, Rip was the offensive coordinator at Alabama, so got out of coaching for, for a year, then came out here and has done a fine job with this offense. This is second down 12 for the Wolf Pack. Training by seven with 857 going again. Some pressure from Arizona. Try to release it out to Chris Williams. He was well covered also. With Chris White over there covering him. Since the tight end, they keep looking for 84. the coaches up in the booth are saying we think we can get him open <laughs> his body tendency that, that's michael O'Kane upstairs a good irish lad that played quarterback for dick Sheridan in high school then went on to play at clemson three-year starter at clemson and coaching the running back now here at from excuse me north carolina state this wildcat defense stepping again third and 12 at the wildcat 25 yard line montgomery with a check off and it just got too close to elapsing down to the clock. Matter of fact, it did. They're going to delay his game. They've shut down the 25-second clock to elapse. It is a five-yard penalty back to the 30. At this point, obviously, they want to get the first down. It does give a little more open field in terms of touchdown. But it is third down 17 now. They've got to get to the 13-yard line for the first down. Both these coaches have a lot of confidence in their quarterbacks, and they both saw our plays in the line of scrimmage. The Tony's talking about Ronald Deal, put them in a lot of what they call check with me situations to make decisions on the line of scrimmage, as Shane Montgomery is doing here now. And he's got to get 18 yards out of this play. Here he comes with the call. He gets his back turned tight for protection. Here comes the pressure. There's Chris Singleton with a sack at the 43-yard line, number 87. He was the sack leader, had 10 sacks on the regular season for the Wildcats. The first one in this ball game. A loss of 13. The first down stick is at the 13 yard line, and it's all the way back to the 43. That makes it fourth and 30. What a defensive stand by the Arizona Wildcats. Now they're going to come after the punter, Preston Pogue. They've got 10 men up there. <laughs> kind of fakes the pressure. Now they're dropping back to give Lewis some coverage room, but the ball is going to bounce down inside the 15. At the 14, or about the 15, rolls out of bounds on the far sideline. Punt of 29 yards, but inside the 20 by Preston Pogue. 7.56 to go in the ball game. Thursday, Moses Malone, Patrick Ewing, Atlanta, New York, Big Men, Big Battle, live at 7.35 Eastern on TBS. Thursday, the Knicks and the Hawks, on TBS. Thursday night. Hurry and you'll make it. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Still for the Wildcats out for the 17. The Wildcats have really proven that bend but don't break defensive statement they've made prior to this game. Larry McDuff really has to be proud of the way this guy's played. Arizona obviously not able to generate much offense in the second half. North Carolina State gaining an edge in statistics, but 
still a seven point spread here. Quick handoff. And a couple to about the 21 yard line. Elijah Austin made the initial contact. He's the nose guard. There's Ron Beal, the 5'10 junior quarterback. And there are a lot of statistics that you can look at on quarterbacks or any specific position, but the one that I like best about him is that he's 13 and 5 and 5 and 13 and 5 in the games that he started here. He's a winning quarterback. He generates, he generates success. Steve Arizona's had trouble generating offense in the fourth quarter all year long. They were having trouble again. That was third down three. Deal kept it, did not get the first down, and NC State is going to get a chance to load their offensive guns again. It was Thomas and Debnam with the stop. 91 is Derek Debnam, a Winston-Salem high school teammate of the other side tackle, Ray Agnew. The Wolfpack coaches were concerned about their size going into this game. They thought they may get muscled around a little bit by Arizona, but if they're not big, they're sure playing big tonight. It's going to be the ninth punt of the game for John Need. NC State almost got to it a couple of times and forced him to get it away before he was ready. That bounced out of bounds at the 48-yard line of Arizona. Let's go down to Craig Sager on the sideline. Ken Hayes is on the sidelines. This is the gentleman who was talking injured earlier. He wants to go back in. However, doctors have looked at his leg. They feel that he has either a cracked bone or possibly a broken bone on the right side of his right leg. So he'll be taken for x-rays after the game. He will not be back tonight. Back to you, Bob. Thanks, Craig. That was only a 26-yard putt. And now the Wolfpack has once again exceptional field position. This is at least the fifth time, it is exactly the fifth time, that NC State has started inside Arizona territory tonight, and yet they have only 10 points on the board. Here's the handoff to Warren. He's just pounded as he gets no yardage. Hit about three times Donald Salem, who's a real street fighter at inside linebacker, the leading tackler for this Wildcat team. He's the kind of guy, reminds me of John Brantley, he's played University of Georgia. Exactly, you know, he's from Colorado Springs that uh, you know, had a situation last spring and Dick Tomey took away his scholarship. And uh, he paid his, his own way to come back here this year. You know, if he, if he keeps his nose clean, keeps his focus straight, you know, they'll give him a scholarship back. But uh, Dick felt like uh, Donnie needed to learn a lesson. They came back and played very well. Said, Coach, I want to stay. I want to play. I'll pay my own way. I'll sell my motorcycle. <laughs> what he did. Almost picked off by 31 Chris Wright. They were trying to get it to Tyrone Jackson. Very close. Wright almost had his hands on it two or three times tonight. Chris Wright is another one of those versatile defensive backs. And Scotty Geyer moved over to play free safety. Chris Wright pops up and is playing strong safety, but he can play free also. And it's a real well coached group of guys. And he is in the right spot at the right time. Almost comes up with the kick. I had you right on the tips of my fingers, and I let you slip right through my hand. I love that song. I won't sing it, but I promise that. Third down, 10. Wolf pack again, finding problems with this Wildcat defense. Here comes the pressure. Montgomery getting rid of it. Close to the first down. Jurgens turns and gets it. Big catch and extra effort by Bobby Jurgens. Burden finally hauls him down, but it's right near the 36 yard line and a Wolf pack first down. It's becoming obvious now that they're keeping the ball away from Darrell Lewis. They're throwing things back into the short side of the field, and they're throwing it away from number four, Darrell Lewis. This time, Montgomery delivers it on time, and Bobby Jurgens, who's got a, a pair of touchdown catches, seven catches on the year, makes the reception and gets the first down. On the first down, 10, from outside the 36. Here comes Aubrey Shaw, who made that exceptional run for a first down earlier and didn't do a bad job there either. Geyer got him after he penetrated the 30 to the 27-yard line, only a couple of yards away from the first down six. Let's watch it here. Varn leading the way. He was a tailback last year, looking for somebody to block Singleton upfield, maybe a little bit too far upfield. And, uh, worked his way down there. He's just Geyer coming down. He's all these backs, Barber, Jackson, Sean Williams will be back next year for Arizona State. 
They'll run the ball better next year than they have this year. You can bet on that. Hand off to Maynard. I don't think he got it on the second down. They hit him right at the line of scrimmage. Ty Parton with the tackle. He also is a freshman for the Wildcats. He's out there. Master back to another third down conversion attempt. And this will be the 20th, 21st third down conversion attempt of the night for NC State. They have controlled the ball this entire ball game, but have put only 10 points on the board. And with three and a half minutes to go, trail it by seven. The pitch to Shaw, needs a block, got it, but there comes Chris Wright for a huge Arizona defensive play. Now, fourth down. How about a fourth down conversion by the Wolfpack with 3.15 to go in the game? He's at the wide receivers along with Cavalier on fourth down less than a yard. For NC State training by seven, this is big. Here's the pitch to Shaw. He didn't get it. The Wildcats were there. What a defensive series. Ty Parton, 99, and 54, Donnie Salem. Among those to stop the fourth down conversion by the Wolfpack. Harrison shifts it over at the last moment. Salem got right in his face, carried him back upfield. There was pressure that determined that back had to cut upfield right now. Look at the accelerate. Look how deep Singleton is. But a nice block. They get rid of him. Barnes upfield, but Parton catches it from, from behind. Dick Sheridan. Devastated by that play. Well, there's three minutes, three seconds remaining. And Arizona's been able, unable to move the ball in this half. Let's see if they do any better here. Not much on that play. Reggie McGill may not have even gotten back to the line of scrimmage. It was Debnam who got all the way out there to make the play for the Wolfpack. So the clock ticking down. There are two timeouts remaining for NC State. They trail it by seven. Arizona needs first down here if they want to breathe easier. The eye bone offense has not worked well against NC State tonight. No, it hasn't. And, uh, and again, that's a real testimony to Joe Pate and the preparation here. And his, his staff, they've done a fine job getting ready for Arizona. Third, second down, and just a little bit more than 10. Bates tries up the middle. He doesn't get much either. He might have gotten out there to about the 26. Lee Knight made the stop there. Minus the 85-yard interception return by Arizona. This will be a 10-10 tie, and that's the kind of defensive ball game that it's been. You see Dick Sheridan standing next to Joe Pate. Joe's got the hat on. Wants to talk to one of his fellas. Sheridan played against his people uh, at the uh, University of Ten Tennessee Chattanooga. Decided that he didn't want to play against them anymore. He wanted to have them on his side. Well, we want to take just a moment here on the final football game of the 80s to say goodbye to somebody who is so important to all of us, and that is Teresa, Teresa Bush, T. Bush, our unit manager. She is leaving Turner Sports, and we are going to miss you, Teresa, and only you will know how much. You'll be missed all over the Southeastern Conference. Uh, Bob and I give when we go into a, a location, whether it's uh, at LSU or Athens, Georgia, or Tuscaloosa, Alabama. You know, they say, hey, how you guys doing? Where's Teresa get here? <laughs> but she is just a real professional and makes life uh, wonderfully easy for all of us, takes care of all our arrangements, and so much more which is the uh, emphasis with all capital letters. So, Teresa, Godspeed to you. It's been a wonderful association. Of course, we're going to, all of us, are going to remain in close touch. <laughs> so long, Teresa. 2.13 to go in this ballgame. Arizona leading it by 10. She's gushing the tears right now. Feel Deal has it batted down. That is 0 for 12 on third down. Arizona has not been able to convert one single third down play, and NC State still got a shot in this ballgame. Ray Agnew's going to come from the right side of your picture here. Field dropping back. Trying to develop a screen over the right side. You see Parker heading out that way. 
John Brandon heading out that way, but ooh, Ray was almost the tight end on that play. 6'4", 265, ACC Defensive Player of the Year. You'll be getting to see him on TV a whole lot more. to the 25 and Stan Anderson had to run out of bounds back there. What a great job of me getting Wolf Pack down by 10. Montgomery thrown for 188 yards tonight. 17 of 40 with a touchdown and an interception. We're going to see this ball in the air a lot, particularly as they can see the first down or two. And will this Wildcat defense continue to hold up under the pressure of the Shane Montgomery passing? It's complete to Chris Williams. He breaks the tackle and gets a first down. It's seven seconds on that play, and the clock stops to move to six, and up they come. You don't want to go total pre-men here. Larry McDuff as the defensive coordinator has been in this situation, I'm sure, many times. You don't want to get totally away from the pressure that was able to pin up Steve Montgomery for most of the afternoon. It's Al Bird on the crossing pattern, and he gets about eight yards to the 47. They'll huddle up quickly while the clock ticks. NC State has one timeout remaining. Clock down to 136, 135 and counting. Dick Tony counting on this Wildcat defense. There's the time in your lower right. It is counting. Second down, two. It is complete for the first down. To the 46-yard line. That was Cavalick with the reception. That'll stop the clock at 116. And Shane Montgomery is up to 216 yards in the air now. And Dave Jones. Bag going on to be the head coach at Davidson. Mount Ron McBride going on to be the head coach at Utah. It's on the paper where Rip Shear is talking to a couple of students about head coach at Utah. Well, this has been a, a delightful opening Copper Bowl game. Then he's out right up to the final minute here. Montgomery completes another one. This one is to Reggie Lawrence, who got out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Game of five. Minute ten remains. Defensive linemen start to get worn out in this period as Lewis gets a jam on Kavlik. Right response. Attack Lawrence in the flat. They're giving him that two-deep look, but they basically are breaking down into man-to-man. -man. You know, NC State, despite their proliferation of passing, doesn't really have a deep threat guy. Could have been Porter, and he re-entered the game, and he was injured earlier. The rest of them have had a possession back receiver. He's tough to take it up there. Maybe Reggie Long. Second down for pressure. Incomplete Montgomery unbelievably got it off. He's intended for Al Bird, but Arnold Mobley, who had been taken up earlier in the game, also was right up there. They stop the clock at 106, and this will be third down and a long four. Now, they might have gotten the matchup that they wanted on that last particular set because they had Reggie Lawrence lined up right across from Chris Wright, and they were even across the board. It looked like it was man to man coverage there, and if you want to get a matchup, that's the one. Not that Chris Wright isn't a good athlete, but he's a strong safety against playing against a track man. Third down four. Pressure. Montgomery just had to throw it incomplete. The man running down the sideline was Al Bird. Mobley came up there to apply the pressure once again, and it'll be fourth down. So you certainly don't want to take the sack here, so Montgomery does the wise thing. As Mobley comes up the gut, nobody really picks him up. He dumps it out there in the direction of somebody with a white shirt. And as a result, saves them about 12 yards, or else it would have been fourth and 15 or 16. This will no doubt be the last hurrah for NC State here. Fourth down for a minute two to go in this ballgame. Here's that pressure. Everybody blitzing. It is incomplete. Oh, my. Chris Williams at the 20. Right off the tips of his fingers, that was fourth down. The ball will belong to Arizona. So close, yet so far away. 
Montgomery finds the open man here under pressure, finds the open man, gets it downfield. Would have been a nice catch by Chris Williams, but a catchable football, and I know that uh, you'll remember that one for a long time. So will Vic Charity. This is a man not used to losing in postseason play very often. This team, NC State team of 1988 and 89, won the Peach Bowl against Iowa last year. Here, 57 seconds left. Arizona has the ball, and NC State has only one timeout remaining. Most people thought this would be a defensive struggle, and in fact, it has been that. And this is the Chris Williams attempt to catch the last attempt, the last hope to get back in this ball game for NC State. Had his man beaten with Chris Wright, 31. Talked about Chris Wright, and maybe that might be the best place to go, and man to man, and Shane Montgomery had to lay it up. He couldn't nail it in there because Wright was close enough, and Geyer was coming, and you think it was just Geyer all over the place. He was coming. And it, uh, he just wasn't able to pull it down, wasn't able to find a handle on it. Valiant effort. What a great effort by both these teams. And uh, this game is not a national championship game uh, of course, at this point. And, but valiant effort by both teams. Great job of coaching, good preparation by both staff. We just enjoyed being here. 17 to 10, Arizona wins. And Dick Tony gets his first victory as a head coach in a bowl game. Congratulations from Dick Sheridan, and we'll be back in just a moment. 